So for those who are new, welcome to the world of Alak. Large planet with ten continents, bright band of white rings circling the planet in multiple moons. Each continent is the homeland to a major ethnicity, a race species of people. Bithmugal is the home of the orcs, whereas the uh, Tiefli tribes wander the sandy wastes of another continent. You guys are going to be setting sail off from the shores of a land known as Ragnarok. These are the homelands of the dwarves. And you guys are going to have been, I'm going to use this as you guys' placeholder, setting off from one of the uh, port cities just on the eastern coastline of Ragnarok itself. A little bit of context as to who you are and what you are doing. Each of you are members of what is known as the Pathfinder Initiative, which is a worldwide league of adventurers and explorers, heroes as some may know them. Basically, if you want a drake that's harassing a nearby village taken care of, these are the guys that you call. Beyond this, uh, they often are brought into some political affairs and even military sort of developments as a neutral party in between countries and nations and the different uh, political forces that drive across the world of Alok. In this particular instance, you guys have been assigned from your uh, nearby Pathfinder Lodge to take part in what is considered to be the Maiden Voyage, but the first of a one-of-a-kind sort of class of vessels, something new that the dwarves have developed and are beginning to roll out this concept of a new breed of warfare vessel. And as such, you've been assigned to learn about it, get to meet the crew, accompany them on this journey, and make sure that basically all goes smoothly. There is no uh, untoward business being conducted and return a report of what you learn. The uh, waves begin to crash alongside the side of the ship as you have been sailing for some time now and the name of the ship is the Dwarven Mechanicus. Holy shit! First of all, <laughs> first of all, I want this. <laughs> Snaz is gonna be oh. so jealous he didn't join it on this! Just so you guys know, this is around the same time frame as uh, your guys's. So your guys's other characters are currently off in the world exploring the ruins and stuff like that. So this is in parallel. You know, you started talking about the Pathfinder, so we saved our own fucking asses and we didn't even know it! <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Aboard the Mechanicus is a crew of about 50 to 60 dwarves. And uh, you walking ar along the deck and kind of getting to know them a little bit, you notice that the crew is overwhelmingly male. Almost to the point where you're starting to believe that there are no female dwarves aboard the Mechanicus. Just an interesting kind of note that you take. Well, that should the, be fun. The captain does take you up to the bridge where this kind of strange octahedral room sits atop of this kind of central uh, like uh, citadel essentially that rests atop the deck of the Mechanicus and 
you can see out these small circular porthole windows that are around on all sides. There's control panels and dials and gauges and you guys see coming pouring out of this smokestack at the very front of the ship is the steam rising from the engine that lies down below that propels this vessel forward. As you guys sail through the evening, the sun setting, casting its golden light across the tops of the cresting waves, the uh, captain talks to you and says, we don't expect too much of a, a hassleless journey. We think that everything will go smooth. Basically what we're trying to prove out is the longest run away from land that our old Mechanicus here has been able to accomplish. Um, beyond this, we will be showing you some of the weaponry, how it works. We'll be showing you some of the inner workings of the engine room and basically giving a, a brief synopsis of how she flows. In the meantime, you see that the sun is getting low, it's been a long day. You may feel free to retreat to the mess hall to collect your, your meals for the evening. Are there any questions? Do we expect to come across any enemies on this ship's maiden voyage? This specific voyage is unusually handled at this point. Really, you are the only individuals outside of the Dwarven government officials who know that this is happening. Simply out of a, no offense or anything, but obligation. I hope you can understand. Mm -hmm. Understand. Um, while we were boarding this vessel, I did notice a very weird apparatus on the side of the ship. Could you kind of explain that? Is that is that a weapon to me? Like I, I don't know what that is. Ah uh, yes, those would be uh, some of the steam pipes. It's a, an interesting flow to the way that the engine room works. You'll learn more about how it works tomorrow. I will leave the engineers to... Uh, they get excited when they talk about it. I don't want to spoil their fun. Well, I'm excited to meet the engineers, for sure. Any other questions? Where are we going? The mess hall. If you take no, a left... No, where, where, where is the ship going? <laughs> what is the end destination? <laughs> um, Alright, let's jump back to the map real quick. So, your guys' course... At this point, you guys are probably kind of coming around the cape of the, uh, the southern coast of Ragnarok. And the idea is that you'll be kind of like making a loop out into the open ocean this way, kind of circling around these smaller islands and then returning back to the port city over here. So we're just like basically sailing all the way around Ragnarok? Uh, just kind of around this southern uh, peninsula of it. Gotcha. So you're okay. doing a Yui around the islands there and coming back around them. Yep, the exactly. But gotcha. did you realize that? This, you guys at this point have probably been traveling on the ocean for about five days, and you're expecting it to be another five, 10, 15, 20, 20, another like month or so out on the sea. Oh, oh good yeah. lord. Okay. Excited. I do have a question for you, Captain. Ask away. Are there no women on this ship? Is it only men that are manning the ship? I know. <laughs> myself. Not out of uh, disrespect or anything, I hope you can understand. It's simply a, a cultural element of our uh, the way we conduct business here. Um, 
anybody who wants to, since you're using your D&D 5e characters, roll a history check for me. Um, okay. Can you explain to me how to do that? To the history check? Uh, I thought that oh, was one of the skills. Plus five. It is. The 20. I don't, I don't know where history would be listed. So it's, on it's your, in the second column. Yeah, right there on your main page. If you see where it has a massive list of yeah. like, acrobatics animals. So if you look down a little bit, you'll see intelligence and history, and then you'll have a modifier. Oh, okay. So I just roll a d20 and then a modifier. Gotcha. Yep, yep. yep. Exactly. Thank you. I have never used that skill yet on any of the campaigns that I've played. No one has ever asked for history. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's good to have lore. That's an intel that's an intelligence for intelligence. Basically. Like, just, oh yeah, I passed that. Yeah, you are you putting uh, yours in, Naoki? Okay, there we go. There you go. Cool. So, yes, you guys would all understand this. Um some common knowledge, and the uh, captain elaborates a little bit, but, you know, you guys kind of get an idea of what he's referring to as uh, you realize that it's common knowledge. The dwarf population on Ragnarok, and in general, there is an extreme disproportionate amount of men versus women, and part of that is, well, most of that is because of a, uh, a plague that recently ran its course across Ragnarok and mainly affected the female dwarves and ended up killing many of them. You guys also with those higher roles would understand that common um, conspiracy among the dwarven people is that it wasn't just any plague but the dwarves were the targets of tests for biological warfare. And they believed that the drow dark elves of Gwernarok were to blame. Okay. Yeah. I, I do have one more question for the captain. Yep. You don't seem surprised on how I speak. Have you seen this before, Captain? I love you, Naoki. <laughs> He kind of like smiles a little bit. He's got like a, you know, those old fashioned kind of wooden pipes that he smokes and he kind of just blows a little bit, like a, a smoke ring in your direction. He says, son, I'm about 350 years old. All right. I've seen some weird shit in my time. <laughs> all you Pathfinders seem to have a certain level of uh, uniqueness to you. It's just bound to happen that one of these days I'd find a guy who could talk using magic. Mm. All right, final question. Will there be booze? Son, do you realize what kind of ship you are on? <laughs> well, God damn, I, I God would damn. like to know for history. Like, of are the dwarves going to be booze? All right. Hell yes, I like this ship. Side note, side note, side note, side question, Draxus. Do I have my wings? I will let you have your wings, yes. Oh god, I love you, thank you. <laughs> First time a cannon well, fires the wings go away. <laughs> so you are, a, you are in a parallel universe and a parallel version of yourself, so you getting your wings ripped off wouldn't have happened here. This is true. Well, I just, I mean, but we're in a fucking, we're, we're pathfinders. Who knows? Maybe she got her wings ripped off at some point, too. You never fucking know. I, I mean, figured I'd that, ask. That being said, carbon copy was mentioned, and my inventory is the exact same. So, I mean, it's a fair okay, well. fair question there if she had her, <laughs> her wings no, a buy or not. Def definitely legit. Definitely legit. But yes, you do have your wings. Cool. You guys have been uh, part of the Pathfinder Initiative League for some time. You know, you're not rookies anymore, but, you know, you're kind of like the second rung up at this point. And this this kind of work is typical for, um, you know, 
adventurer is fresh out of like the Pathfinder training regiment, essentially. Basically, we've been we've been there just long enough that we're being given the trust to go out on our own. Exactly. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Small promotion. <laughs> yep. You're working your way up in the world. Alright, guys, let's go get dinner, I guess. I hope the captain comes and drinks with me. What kind of mess is in this mess hall? Oh, just the best stuff. As you guys approach the uh, double metal doors with the... Uh, they both kind of have like these... The, the wheel handles that you kind of spin the wheel to unlock the door. Yeah. And, uh, I love airlocks. Airlocks? They're called air, air. They're called airtight doors. Yeah, it's like an airlock. Or watertight door. doors. Watertight. Right. Yeah. Yep. But as you guys are approaching, you uh, kind of hear this kind of strange sound, kind of like a reverberating through the metal a little bit, and you're just like, "Huh, that's odd. I wonder if that's like the engines or something." And you pull the doors open to see the mess halls spread out before you. It is this massive room, and the interior is built to basically replicate the old style, rustic, classic kind of medieval tavern. It's like wooden floors, wooden chairs, and long tables, and chandeliers with candles basically providing the lighting. And, uh, there's the entire crew of dwarves is basically here sitting on the benches and at the chairs with their mugs ready, just waiting for the food to be prepared. And standing in the center table, standing on the center table, you see this dwarven bard with a lute that he's strumming as he's leading the entire crew of dwarves in this song. They say, Here's to the ones who have stayed. Here's to the ones who are lost on the way. And the drinks bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. Cheers to the ones that we've got. Cheers to those we wish were here, but they're not. And the drinks bring back all the memories. And the memories bring more memories, bring us through. Do 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 do. And the drinks bring back all the memories. And the memories bring more memories, bring us food. As they finish their song, the uh, you hear this clanging as ding 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 ding. The master chef steps through the door uh, of the kitchens that are just beyond, on the opposite side of the tavern from where you are. And he kind of calls out to the group and says, All right, soup's on! And the whole group just says like, Yeah! Slamming their mugs into the tables. I'm going to lean over to Lilyfoot and down the nest and go, are we on a pirate ship? <clears throat> Seems like it does, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm enthused. I like this place. Well, I reckon, uh, I reckon we find ourselves a seat before they're all taken. <laughs> Actually, you watch as all of the dwarves kind of collect their mess kits and start to line up to pass by this large, long, um, basically bay window that separates um, separated via a counter from the tavern that is on the opposite side of kitchen where all the dwarves are viciously preparing food and setting out bowls of soup and stuff like that for the dwarves to grab as they pass by um, the bard actually does come up to you guys kind of slings his loot over his shoulder on a strap and he says well, 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 you just missed out on all the fun. But I do for sure hope that we'll be able to uh, share some stories, trade some experiences. I'd always like to learn more of what uh, others have to see from the world. Well, I'd say we didn't we didn't miss everything, and that was one hell of a song. You come up with that one on your own. Oh, I swear. It's an old dwarven military classic. Can't go wrong with the classics, they say. Before guard. 
I'm sorry, what was that strange man? Can we have an encore? <laughs> Stick around long enough and I bet you all these guys will rally one up for you. Are you kinda... not going to stay and eat? Oh, I am. I'm on my way into the line. You better hurry up or else you're going to miss out. And he kind of just like rushes off like, you know, he literally like kind of had this conversation as he was moving past you to circle to the back of the line that is rapidly forming around the, uh, the perimeter of the tavern. I'm gonna grab a mug and follow. Uh -huh, I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab stuff off the table and throw two bowls in Indominus and tell him, make sure you get doubles hmm, and get yes. line. These bowls look puny. <laughs> <laughs> as yeah, in fact, Indominus, as you approach the uh, the um, the counter window, essentially, one of the chef dwarfs kind of like does a double take as he looks at you, and he's just like. Oh, big fella coming through. And he actually does, like, put up a second <laughs> serving just for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, little guy. Thank you, thank you. What is gonna, this stuff? I'm going to look at the chef and whisper, trust me, he'll be back. <laughs> um, basically, you kind of look at the food that you served, and it's... Imagine if they took, like dried fruit and jerky and um, like preserved beans and stuff like that threw it all into a like a, a vat of water and just boiled it that's kind so of it's like a grog. This, yeah that's pretty much what it is but uh, it smells delicious as you kind of like get a waft of like the steaming food that is in the bowls and already you can see like half the tables in the tavern have been filled up with dwarves and they are just like plowing through these like there's no tomorrow I'm gonna spot us a table and tell the guys this way let's go sit um, I have gotten a second mug and I'm filling it up with ale as well yes so while you are told by one of the chefs it's like okay so there are some rules you know, it's two servings at the max per person. I think we can make an exception for you, big friend. Um, but yes, <laughs> the the tap is unlimited, so feel free to go up as often as you feel. Two servings of food, but you can drink as much as you want? Yes, sir. Thank you, Dwarven Chef. Gotcha. He kind of tips his, like... You know, he's like, you know, the classical white sailor's cap. Like, that's what the chefs wear. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and hand Killer, Killer's character Indominus my, uh, my rations of grog since uh, I've already taken my nutrient injections. Hmm. Can I, uh, can I grab a mug and walk over to the tap for a drink? You can. As you approach, uh, there's, <laughs> uh, you guys, are, you, you step up to where the tap is, and currently, uh, you kind of step through the crowd and see there's this one just, like, super grizzled dwarf. He's got, like, a, a salt and pepper beard, and he's totally bald on the top of his head, and he's got, like, this nasty scar just going, like, di diagonally across his eye, his right eye, and there's like three other dwarves behind him as they're cheering and just like, go, 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 and he's literally like just filling up the entire ale mug, go, 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 go. down it goes, and then immediately puts it underneath to fill it up again, and just does this repeatedly. Hmm, you're gonna sleep well tonight, my friend. He takes we'll do, a moment uh, to kind of like wipe the froth from his mouth, and he says, "That's the idea every night, friend." <laughs> and continues. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up and yes, grab I'm, the I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna walk up and take the next ale cup from the guy once he fills it up and chug it myself. <laughs> so you want to try and like snatch it out of his hand like after uh -huh. it's filled? 
Go ahead and make a. Uh... He's gonna make enemies on this ship already. <laughs> make a sleight of hand check. Oh shit! You would do the one thing I don't have it. Hey man, fucking modifiers. For. It makes sense. That's the that's what it calls for. Does she get at least like oh, some kind shit. of advantage? Wow. She's like, as fuck. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> Jesus. Never mind. Absorb elements on the cups of ale. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I'm going to do. I would like to actually do it and roll the d6 for drunkenness. Do it. Yes, I like this. Um, I'm, I'm going to stay sober. I was going to get a drink and try to, you know, find somebody <laughs> for some amusement, but um, <laughs> You're about to watch this amusement. is my amusement now. This is the amusement. Yeah, okay, right. you're freaking plastered. Is that it's not hours? true? Um, I wasn't doing hours. That is, uh, it's technically damaged, but I'm going to oh, say that that's I probably see. I'm. I'm gonna guess that's uh, gonna be something along the lines of. I'm gonna go against my constitution there, which is 17. So okay. I've got a nice buzz. That's how I'm gonna <laughs> contribute go. that. I like it. So yeah, Lilyfoot, you literally just kind of like deftly snatch it at, at the perfect moment where his grip is like just loose enough, um, and you kind of you you down the whole thing. I'm I'm gonna snatch it from him and I'm gonna down the whole thing and slam it on the table and look at him and go, mm, nothing compared to fairy wine. <laughs> Make a Constitution saving throw. <laughs> Hey, hey, I get a plus four for that one. <laughs> Fuck it on hey, fire. That's bad. All right. What's so up, you... everyone? What's hey. up, Jay? What's up, Jay? <laughs> so Lilyfoot just downs this entire dwarf-sized mug of ale and holds it like her, like nobody's business. The dwarf kind of looks at you and just is like. Well, now that's quite a trick, little lass. Where'd you learn a feat like that? I'm gonna look at him and be like, well, you do see the party that I'm with, right? He says, yeah, Pathfinders, you guys know how to party. That and many more. All right, let's make a challenge out of it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so he's gonna challenge you to a uh, a drinking contest. Okie dokie. So I'm gonna have you roll another Constitution saving throw. <laughs> Lily. Okay. <laughs> Lily all tapped out, guys. Well, One beer. ten. <laughs> Apparently. 10 is average. Wow, well, yeah, <laughs> average for, you know. You slam your second one, and you realize it's like, oh, okay, the dwarven mead takes a second to really kick in. And <laughs> you're just now feeling the effects of the first drink you've had, and you just downed a second one, which you haven't felt yet. Um, he, you know, he can do this all day long. He's just pounding it back. Uh, you're technically still in the fight if you want to continue. I mean, I have also stepped up to play. You're gonna try and, uh... How, so now, how is Benny going to participate in a drinking contest? Tell, riddle me this. Absorbing elements. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I got a good buzz from the first two. So I'm gonna say the, second, the third one I did was you know Naoki make a Constitution saving throw with advantage. Yes. As another round ensues. Just want to make Somebody... note: I started out really fucking strong there. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna have to get you to sleep. No, it's okay. You make she's, a getting, fool of yourself. she's getting ready to put herself to sleep. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to carry you to bed. <laughs> okay, okay. It's okay. I People wait holding their own. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Lilyfoot, 
you are starting to get a little tipsy. You're just like, okay, that's two, and then glug glug glug, there goes the third one. <laughs> uh, Naoki, you, you, this is some strong mead, and uh, those dwarves don't mess around. Do you inject it? Like, are you injecting it into yourself? Oh no, I'm actually just absorbing it. Like, I'm putting my fingers in it and absorbing oh, it. Oh, <laughs> like a fucking <laughs> straight into the bloodstream. <laughs> yes. That's I'm putting my fingers into it, using magic, and it's just being sucked into me. Good lord. I, roll again, Naoki, because you have advantage. We'll see if you get a higher score or not. No, okay. 13 is still good. So, yeah. You can, like, you're getting a buzz off of this, and you're just like, oh yeah, this is going to be some good sleep juice. And you're looking at Lilyfoot, and like she's starting to go a little cross-eyed. <laughs> her sea legs are kind of failing her. <laughs> but uh, this dwarf, for. this dwarf is is going strong still. Last round. One second. I've got a comment for cross eyes. Hold your own, Lilyfoot. <laughs> I did okay. <laughs> uh, Naoki, that that would be uh, rolls from you as well. You got it. Yep, I was working on it. Yep. Sixteen. You're doing pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I'm neck and neck with the guy. We're barely hanging on, but we're neck and neck <laughs> with each other. So Naoki, you're like, okay, now I'm I'm, I'm feeling it. And you're just kind of like you're in that sweet spot. You're just like. You got just enough to be like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling loose. You know what I mean? And then you watch as the other dwarf, who had already been having several drinks prior to this, uh, starts to kind of like go a little like, seem like he's going to tip over and him and Lilyfoot like literally fall into each other and then just collapse in a heap on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> And all of the dwarves that are around him just kind of like burst in laughter. Just, like, <laughs> just clapping each other on the back. Very nice. Oh, I would like to have another. Hangover. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Nimdak is just kind of standing over these two that have been left semi unconscious on the floor here <laughs> in the middle of dinner. <laughs> You're technically the winner. Very nice. I'm gonna drink some more. <laughs> as long as you uh, don't roll. Oh yeah, you're doing fine. <laughs> the absorb elements is kind of like helping you stay in that zone. You're just like you're not, you're not having any troubles with it. <laughs> and Dominus, as you're kind of like watching all this craziness unfold. Um, a dwarf kind of sidles up next to you and kind of sits his mess kit next to you. And he's, uh... This gentleman has got, like, a bright red beard and full head of hair. And it's, like... It's kind of wild and unkempt. But, uh, like... It's just in stark contrast to his beard, which is, like, these just, like... Almost immaculate-looking curls just cascading down his, uh, his chest. Almost down to like where his belly button would be. He Anyways. says, "Nice to meet you, friend. Name's Torvin. Torvin, I'm Indominus. Nice he kind of like extends his hand out to you. Do I like stick a finger out because like I don't know the size difference? Like, am I gonna crush his hand if I reach out to shake his, his hand? hand? I gotta do like shake his hand gently or." So, like, his head is probably bigger than a basketball, and his hand is probably just a little bit smaller than his face. So, like, his hand is, like, just about the same size as yours, despite his stout nature. So he's stumpy. Yep. Got it. Stout. Stumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you clasp his hand and you shake, and it's a very firm grip. He says... You get out to the sea very often. No, this is this is my first uh, <laughs> first voyage on the, on a boat like this. Well, 
Hope it don't take too long for you to get your sea legs. Yeah, hasn't been so bad so far. Oh, don't mm -hmm. worry. A couple of drinks of these, and he kind of slides his mug over towards you. He says, you'll be a little tipsy, don't you worry. Uh, I like to watch the party. He kind of like takes his mug back and kind of like nods in your direction. He's like, I can respect that. Downs it. <laughs> I'm gonna slide my other beer, the beer that I had poured, over to him and be like, here you go, buddy. Oh, well. You just became my new best friend. Downs it again. <laughs> so what's it like being part of the Pathfinder Initiative? Get to do a lot of killing and, you know, that kind of fun stuff. Making, making people into mashed potatoes. <laughs> I can see you got the the meats for it. It kind of slaps you on the, like the your bicep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had my fair share of kills too. It's uh, not an easy life being in the military. After the first couple hundred, it all becomes the same. Hey, hey. Probably the most interesting kill I've had was uh. There's actually a small sea serpent, but it had wings, and it was flying over the deck of the ship. I just grabbed it by the tail, flung it around a bunch of times, and slammed its head into the mast. Quite a beautiful mm. spray of gore, if I had to say so myself. Hmm. Killed a squirrel once. He kind of laughs and like claps you on the shoulders. It's quite an adventure that sounds like, my friend. Uh, quite the squirrel. He's riding a cat. Yellow riding cat. a cat, you say? Yellow you sure you haven't cat. gone too deep into the bottle there, friend? I haven't had a drop. Well, you'll have to explain this to me then. And uh, the night proceeds. <laughs> <laughs> You guys finish up mess, you retreat back out into the deck where everybody gets the fresh air as the bright white glow of the rings of a lock stretching across the sky from horizon to horizon illuminates the ocean in this beautiful display of cascading waves and you can just feel the power of the Mechanicus below you just cutting through with incredible speed. And uh, the stars and the moons, moons not as visible tonight, a couple of them are in their quote unquote new moon phase, but there is a slight red crescent of one, uh, a little bit offset from the rings themselves and the stars shining brightly. Um, is there anything that you guys want to kind of learn about or talk, talk to anybody before you go to rest for the bed? Um, do I see any dwarves that may or may not be engineers, like, on the deck? There are a few uh, crew members who are just kind of, like, you know, maintaining the rigging and uh, sweeping the deck, that sort of thing, just doing the general maintenance of the upper deck duties. I'd like to go talk to them. Okay. You do find... Uh, kind of up near the smokestack of the ship where the steam just continues to billow out at a constant rate um, there is one dwarf who's kind of like checking some dials on the side of it there seems to be like a little bit of a control panel kind of built in and he's just kind of like inspecting the, re the readings and making sure everything looks good he's got like a brown beard and brown hair and it's pretty plain to be honest sees you approach and says can I help you? Yep, one sec. What do we have here, sir? I am to learn about this shit. Ah, uh, yes. Well, this here is the smokestack. This is the, basically the uh, 
the ventilation for the engines, uh, as opposed to some of the Arcana craft, you know, typically machines like this would be powered by some sort of uh, ether engine, but uh, we like to stay away from those such things as they're easily disrupted by various magical phenomena. However, steam, that's as reliable as the fuel you've put into it. I just typed it in while fucking trying to type it into my phone at the same time. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how it heats the steam? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. It's like, how is the steam heated? Is it like fire or do they use like electricity with coils? He kind of looks at you and is just like, well, you see, uh, we do have conductive coils within the engine itself, but that's kind of to amplify the effect of the uh, the runes that are basically set underneath the boiler, and those emanate a magical heat that allows us to initiate the engine. Once it's started, though, we can uh, supply it with any sort of flammable material as fuel. So coal, wood, those sort of things. Okay, so you guys use a magic ignition and just maintain. That's very clever, because you're not sapping your mana for long periods of time to get it going. That is the thing. It's just economical, because you wouldn't believe the amount of time and logistics that goes into crafting an Arcana Craft engine. Would you imagine the power that one must have to propulse this entire vessel through the waves? I would say quite a bit. Now, are your water tanks, are they purely metal, or do you have something else you carry the water in? Or is it taking in ocean water through an inlet into the engines and getting steam that way? Well, you see, yes. Up front, where you see these little pipes kind of sticking out the side of the hole, that is uh -huh. the auxiliary seawater storage. So it does take in water from the, uh, obviously, the ocean as we sail upon, and process it through the steam engine, and it evaporates. The steam goes up through the stack, and the salt that gets left behind actually can be collected for the mess hall. Multi-purpose. I really do enjoy that. You found a very clever way of propelling this ship. Why, thank you, good sir. Now, I do believe that uh, there is a scheduled tour of the actual engine room for tomorrow. You may be able to learn more about it then. I look forward to it. Will you be there? Well, it depends on uh, when the shift is. I have various tasks about the ship, so I may run into you, but there's no guarantee. I'm going to extend my hand out to him. My name was Benny. It was a pleasure to meet you. What was your name? My name is Jarek. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, Jarek. Until we meet again. All the best. And he goes back to his checking the dials. Can Lilyfoot wander around the boat and see if she can spot anybody of, like, I don't know, higher rank of any sort? Um, you do know that the captain is currently still aboard the bridge. Uh, as opposed to, as it, oh, in regards to officers, uh, you actually do catch the, uh, the CO wandering the deck, and he's kind of like standing a little bit off from where Benny had, had his conversation, just in front of the bastion, essentially, as it's called. The bastion of the ship. Can I approach him? Does he hey, seem... Hey. Is he? He has a clipboard, <laughs> and he's just kind of like, very focused as he's checking through things, making notes, kind of like, you know, He's actually like 
talking to dwarves as they pass by here and there, just kind of like checking in on them and uh, generally just kind of like doing some logistical management, it seems. Okay. Um, I'm going to approach him and just, you know, almost start it off with asking how his day is going. <laughs> well, the, the day is going as the day is going. One step at a time, right? I, I suppose so. Yeah, definitely. Um, just out of curiosity, what, what actually inspired the dwarves to create such a vessel? Yes, well, <clears throat> it's just kind of inevitable if you think about it. Um, we do have various enemies across Olaf, whether that be beasts or other nature, you know, other uh, nations. My apologies. Uh, and he's just kind of like continually like flipping through his clipboard and writing stuff down. He's like kind of like half paying attention to you. Um, and he continues and says. As you know, technology and magics advance, we have to be able to defend ourselves. And uh, quite frankly, he kind of looks up from his uh, clipboard for a second. He actually has like a small pair of glasses that rest on his nose. He kind of like brings them up to cover his eyes better as he looks at you. He says, "Fireballs wreak havoc on wooden ships." Uh, I would assume that fire does wreak havoc on a wooden ship. Um, have you... Is this the first vessel of its kind, or are there to be more of the same kind? Um, you, going into this, would know that this is the first ironclad um, vessel, seafaring vessel, really. And the dwar you know that the dwar dwarves do have plans to make more. More. Okay. Okay. Well, that answered the question I was going to ask you, Mr. DM. I was going to ask uh, if I would know by the history of the area if this is the only one, so that's kind of neat. Yep, this is the very first. This, you, you also would know that the Mechanicus has been you know, go, undergoing tests for some time now, so it's not like, you know, you're going out and you're like, man, I'm not sure if this thing's going to sink halfway there or not. It's, you know, they're, right. They've been doing enough tests on it and they're like, they're comfortable with sending a whole crew and inviting the Pathfinders. It's like, this is a solid vessel and they know it. Can it's I... not like the Titanic. Right, it's not <laughs> a main voyage. Nope. It's, well, um, it's, it's uh, official, quote unquote, maiden voyage. Right. It has been, you know, out on the sea for a little while already. It's been through its trials. Yep. So I'm going to ask him, um, just generally, or maybe even DM, um, what is the point in having a group of Pathfinders on the ship for this voyage? Uh, again, you would kind of have this knowledge going in. Basically, yeah. the Pathfinder initiative has duties that have kind of like evolved over time of being mediators between nations so like if there's you know international disputes you know like say that the the tieflings and the elves have some sort of trade you know snafu and they want you know reckon recompense and uh, compensation you know sometimes the pathfinders will get involved to maybe like lead up investigations into what actually happened or uh, stuff like that. Sometimes they'll even just kind of like be accompanying accompaniment for um, uh, what's the word? Diplomats and stuff like that. Uh, in this case, you guys are kind of just like learning what you can about the dwarves' new naval weapon, and you're going to be reporting that for reporting what you learn to the Pathfinder Initiative for them to have on record. Okay. It's kind of like a you're basically being made aware that, yes, this is something the dwarves plan on, you know, rolling out for their navy at large, and in order to, you know, satisfy the requirements of the nations at large, you're kind of like doing your due diligence to document and make others aware okay. that this is happening. So, 
So what you're saying is essentially we're the Geneva Convention's reporters. Yeah. Kinda. Yep. Okay, so we're deciding if there's going to be war crimes or not. I mean, yeah, if you end up discovering something that would kind of fall in that vein, then that would be something you would be obligated to include in your report. Yeah. Well, out of character here, Lilyfoot, Indominus, you already know me well enough. War crimes are allowed. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little loosey-goosey with his judgment. What's a war crime? <laughs> yes! Mm. Looks and like we talked about turning turning something into mashed potatoes. Do I really? I mean, yeah, but that's hand to hand combat, sir. That's that's different. In a, in a this is a world, weapon. It's yeah. It's, there's a lot of interesting things that you know magic could complicate. I've already thought of three things that could complicate something with this ship, just with a little knowledge I have. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna ask if the designer is on the maiden voyage with us. No, the lead engineer has remained back at the homeland. Uh, you know, he's already done his tests and is satisfied with her performance, so there's no worries here. And um, am I to assume that we may see some weapons testing while we're out here? This is true. Um, we do plan on uh, exercises, just kind of schedule maintenance, and uh, he's like back to his clipboard. He's kind of like really distracted as he's going through. Um, he's just kind of like, if you want more information, you can bring it up with the captain or one of the other officers. Uh, well, I'm going to finish our conversation up then and look at him and be like, gladly, I'll go find them now. Okay. And then kind of just walk off. Yep, and he just, like, continues on with his business as if you had never been there. <laughs> hey, Jarek, is, is, is Jarek still near us? Like, still near me? Uh, yeah, we can say that, you know, you're still there with him. Okay, because... I've thought of a question to ask him based off of uh, something he told me. Okay. Derek. Yes, the sir. water inlets that you have on here at the front. Mm hmm. How do they pull the water in? Well, there's a series of uh, pumps that will usher the fluid into these pipes. And once it's there, uh, it stays in these tubes on the outside of the ship. So basically, if we ever came across some waters where, for some reason, the ocean water was unfit to be processed through the engine, we would still have a reservoir to draw from to keep the ship moving. Okay. And are these pumps one-way pumps, or do they have a two-way valve? In them? Well, seeing as it directs the water in and then it draws it out again, when needed, that is bi-directional, yes. Okay. Is there any pressure behind the, the output whenever you go to put it back out, or is it just draining it? Uh, it is just a drain. It, it's the, due to gravity and the elevation at which these pipes are stored, it, the, natural, the water naturally will flow out of the pipes. Okay. Now... My my last question for you, Jarek, before I retire for the night and find something else to investigate is can these pipes theoretically be used to flood an enemy ship? He kind of like stops what he's doing and kind of like cocks his head in a strange way, kind of twists his face up a little bit as he's thinking. He's like... I don't really know why you would want to, but there may be enough water in there if uh, it's difficult to extract in a proper fashion. I don't know why you would just use the ocean water that is 
literally just outside the hole. Just the, another option for <laughs> expedited sinking. You see, you're talking like if for some reason the valves on these failed and then all the water like flowed out from them, you know, with when they didn't want it to? No, no. Uh, I'm thinking of. I don't know what type of games you've played, but you can technically sink another ship by filling its hull with water on, yeah. and several physics based games. So, what I was thinking was think of this ship as a giant fire truck and these wooden ships around it as uh, water balloons. Because <laughs> when you put so and you fill water, water balloons up, you can sink them. You know, if you put if you put uh -huh. enough water in a water balloon in a, in a small enough container or a large enough container, it will sink because of the density of the water inside of it. So my thought was, you know, yeah, if I if they can use them like as a fire fire hose and direct because those look like pipes that they could easily open up I and see. force water out. Um, I was yep. I was technically pitching an idea is what I was throwing. It was a hypothetical okay. scenario, but it was an idea around for for yeah, war crimes. Right. Hypothetical <laughs> battle battle <laughs> tactics. I see. Yes. I see. He says he kind of like coming from like an engineer's mindset. He's kind of like, oh, I get it now. Yeah, that's probably something that you'd want to take up with uh, some of the other members of the crew. I. Uh, I just maintain the design as it's built. <laughs> Fair enough, Jared. I appreciate you uh, having the conversation with me. I wish you a good night. I will head on now. And uh, I'm going to slant away, writing into my notebook that uh, weaponizing the water intake was not on their list of priorities. <laughs> Uh, it might be something to uh, take up with the captain or something, or, you know, if you were want to put ideas in their heads. So, so, so are the are the uh, the dwarves? Are they um, still? Is, back, is the sweet. one that I was talking to still in the mess hall with me, or are they all just kind of like cantered off to do their um, business? Um, we can say that he is. Yeah, we can say that he kind of like wandered back in for like an extra drink. You know. Mm. an hour or so after the dinner is over. Gotcha. So I, I was going to continue with my, my story of the squirrel and the... Oh, I see. <laughs> I was just assuming there, that you kind of explained it to him over dinner. But if you want to, I'd oh. feel free. Yeah, so the squirrel's name was Quasi. And this, this weird, weird cat-like thing was... I think his name was um, Scavenger. Quasi and Scavenger for some reason. Yeah. They had this weird quest. They were ranting and raving about some great acorn. They were they were trying to track down so they could resurrect it. I don't know. Anyway, this little this little squirrel kicked try, almost kicked my ass. Strong little squirrel fucker. Almost kicked your ass. Yeah, yeah. He was uh some kind of barbarian like Swung a hammer as big as mine. How does a squirrel manage to wield a hammer? Hit like a freaking tank. I don't know. All of this confuses me and concerns me. I am now yes. terrified of squirrels in general. Be terrified. Especially the ones that are talking about some acorn. Because they're crazy folk. <laughs> I'll be sure to ended. look out for them. In the future. Don't forget the undead cat. Yeah, I don't know where he got the undead cat either. I didn't stick around to ask. Oh, he's a he necromancer was on too. Weird... Yeah, I, I would assume he was a necromancer. He had a skeleton cat he was riding. By the gods. Are you sure you weren't talking to a, some form of deity? <laughs> he was he was talk, he was talking about some acorn and how this acorn was sacred, but it was gonna destroy the world. I don't know. Oh, I know. And he kind of like claps you on the shoulder to say, You had a dream about the Feywild, friend. 
Is that a thing? Yeah, I don't think it was a dream. I have scars. And I raise my arm to show him, like, really bite deep mark. gouges and bite marks <laughs> from him. Are those squirrel I have teeth? scars. Yes, those are squirrel teeth. The fuck? And his That's cat attacked me, and I got, I got scratches on this arm <laughs> that won't heal for some reason. They're always just, like, permanent scabs. Have you scratch me, remember? You got not checked out by a cleric. That seems, like, unhealthy. No, don't tell my cleric. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I can't stop giggling, thank you. <laughs> don't tell my cleric, so start worrying. Right. It's like, don't uh, tell mom. She'll make me clean it and put it outside. <laughs> right. And with that, I'm going to say that you guys call it an evening. <laughs> don't forget, Indominus is going to look over at this goblin and go, Plus, I don't like shots. Right, yeah, stay away yeah. from needles. <laughs> no rabies <laughs> shots. Hey, he's, he's super afraid of needles. I know very... Very first hand that he doesn't like needles. <laughs> the night passes on with the soothing lull of the waves beneath the ship. You have pleasant dreams of dwarves dancing on tables. Next morning comes, you continue sailing across the vast ocean. At this point, you reach kind of the depths of where the water is just this deepest, deepest blue. And like literally the the waves seem to go almost as tall as the bastion of the, the ship itself way off in the distance. And you, the ship does ride down in these kind of large troughs and then <laughs> break over the crest of the wave as it goes into the next downward descent. And uh, you guys are starting to get a little bit queasy in the stomach. You know, you're just like, for those of you who haven't been, uh, you know, on the sea very much at all, it's uh, it's quite a harrowing experience. And uh, you guys get shown around the ship a little bit. I'm going to say, who is interested in the guns, who is interested in the engine room, and who is interested in the, uh, the, um, the fail-safe compartments? Me! Guns. <laughs> I want a full tour. I love all the things. Okay. What do you want to see first? Weapons. War crimes, please. All right. So you guys get brought to the um, the deck, the front of the deck, kind of like where the where the bow of the ship is, and one of the dwarven engineers, uh, he's kind of got this really gray beard that's just kind of like all like the ends of his beard are singed, and he just hasn't taken the time to like clean it up at all, and you know he's balding just on the top of his head. And he's got like this clipboard and he kind of shows you. Yes, and so these are the main gun batteries. And you see these brass turrets set into the deck of the ship. Each of them with these 40 millimeter diameter barrels that are about 10 feet long. And there are three of them per turret. These will launch in heavy payload weaponry at extreme velocities and distance, uh, potentially up to a range of a mile and a half. A nautical mile. Uh, we can fire all three barrels at once, or one individually as we see fit. These have full range of rotation, 360 degrees, and also a certain level of vertical elevation. Along the sides of the, the railings, you will see we have our ballista stations. These are mainly for anti-air defense. Uh, 
These can fire streams of arrows of much. Uh, yes, that calculates about right. This is 60 arrows per minute. Uh, mm. They have impressive. belt feeding contraptions built underneath the deck to supply the ammunition. Uh, and meanwhile, at the very front of the ship, you may see that there are, is a catapult of sorts, and it kind of brings you over to this you know, main station where there's literally like this... It's kind of like a ballista, but it, it's got this weird sort of shape to it where it almost looks like it could fling itself forward. This is mainly used if we want to uh, launch payloads that will rest and land on the decks of other ships, or uh, potentially even throw off uh, hazardous cargo if the need arrives. That is the main arsenal of the ship, uh, besides depth charges and you know, other minuscule munitions. Is there any questions? You consider depth charges minuscule? Well, I mean, that is kind of the standard run of the mil dwarven military practice for ships to carry depth charges. I actually have quite a few questions here. Before Nancy asks, I? I only have one question, and then I'll let you unload all yours. What do the turrets up front fire? Uh, the ballista? No. The turrets, not the ballistas. Oh, the big ones. The big ones. Um, they, one of the engineers actually kind of heaves up this massive metal slug, and he just sets it on the deck. It's about, you know, almost like a foot in diameter. And... Um, like it's got this it basically looks like a bullet it's just a big bullet that was my only question first question may i see a round from the 40 mil cannon yes you may in fact we are going to be running our munitions testing in just a moment if you stand back, please. And you watch as uh, all three, of, there's three turrets. One set in the front of the smokestack, one between the smokestack and the bastion, and then one behind the bastion. And you watch as all three turrets kind of rotate slowly, click, 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 towards the starboard uh, side, and you watch as the barrels even uh, in unison rise up to like a 45 degree angle. And it says, "On my mark, fire!" And individually, I'm actually gonna have you guys make a Constitution saving throw for me. <laughs> constitution, gotcha. What, 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 what happened? Oh, there it is. Can we play with your axis all the time? I don't get fucked by the die on stupid things. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> Very nice. Yeah, you all got you all got above fifteen. So as you're standing by the nearest battery, mm -hmm. you hear, <laughs> and you can feel as this imp the sound the impact the sound hits you to your core and you can feel your skeleton vibrating inside your body as one of these barrels ignites with the shot the air being filled with fire and smoke for a brief instant before disappearing all a all of a sudden and then there's kind of like a moment's pause <laughs> all of you hear lilyfoot scream <laughs> <laughs> And just as she finishes her scream, she's like, What the? 
<sighs> All of the other barrels fire as well. Each one <laughs> getting, you know, the impact on you guys being lesser and lesser as, like, it's kind of working its way down the ship away from you. But yeah, that first one really just, like, knocked your socks off. <clears throat> and Thomas wants one of these handheld. <laughs> so, what do I notice about the ammunition when they loaded it? Did I notice anything interesting about it? Them, you did not see them load it. Uh, oh. Where they load the munition is below decks. Ah, okay, so I will not get a chance to see the ammo as of yet. They showed you the slug. It was like, you know, this massive bullet just sitting on the deck. It was basically up to your knee. It, so there's still one up here that I can, like, investigate? Yep. Okay. I'm, they're I'm basically gonna... lobbing Volkswagen Beetles. Well, no, they're lobbing 40 Mike Mike bullets. I'm just, like, interested they... in how this this shell is assembled and how it works. Is there it's a uh, firing cap or? Yeah, there's like there's a there's a uh, gunpowder package underneath each slug, and the slug is fully round and cones up into a point. And uh, basically, yeah, the inspiration for the Mechanicus is the USS Missouri. Okay, okay, that's what I was mostly trying to figure out is how this weaponry worked. Because I really wanted to know if there's a way to modify. And I already know a way to modify this. Cat's been <laughs> on oh, that boy. ship. Can, can I, uh... Can I ask to try something to this guy? What are you trying to try? Well, first off, Draxus, my character does have gold, right? Gold? Oh, Jesus. My, my uh, character does have gold, right? I mean, I guess. Like, I, I have, having, I have 63 gold. from the other campaign, so what I'm trying to figure out is... I'm going to ask this guy, how much does one of these rounds cost? One of, oh, boy. Hmm. Um... More than 63 gold, I'll tell you that. <laughs> For 63 gold, can I modify the tip of this? Uh, I'm... The engineer kind of... I'm going to have you roll a persuasion check. Persuasion? Okay. Yep. What I wanted to do is make a hollow point. So that way when it impacts the ship, it shrapnels into the ship. Ah! Oh. <laughs> so the engineer kind of looks at you. Idea. Yeah, the engineer kind of looks at you and says, I, It would be ill-advised for you to mess with the, the dwarven democracy's property. However, that is a very valid point, and... Thank you for the suggestion. That is actually something that is currently in development. I'm gonna point at this shell and like just draw my fingers over the tip, leaving like fingerprints through like I guess the the grease or however the most bullets have like an oil coating them when you get them. A lubricant. Yeah, like a lubricant to make sure they don't rust or degrade, especially on seawater. Or in mm -hmm. sea air. Yep. So I'm going to draw out the pattern on the tip for him. Um. Oh, let's see. So that way he can, you know. Yep. 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 Share that second. information. Uh, two seconds. I'm gonna have you make another check for me, and that will be. What do I want this to be? 
there's not like a great craft like engineering skill <laughs> in D&D. Um, Could you maybe insight for that? The insight of being able to know uh, how it would be crafted on this particular item. And be able to draw it, maybe. I kind of want it to be more intelligent. Go ahead and just make an intelligence check. Like a straight up intelligence roll for me. Okay. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, so you actually kind of like you trace the pattern on the on the basically the the shell, and the engineer kind of takes a look at what you're doing, and he's like, "Yes, no, I, I can see I can see how this would be, yeah, yeah." And then you kind of like go back and forth a little bit, talking about how you could actually develop this, and uh, you actually, uh, I'm gonna say that you get some inspiration for other smaller munitions on how to do this sort of thing as well. Yeah. Now, can I also mention to him my idea about <clears throat> flooding an enemy ship from the day before? <laughs> yes, you definitely can. He's going to take it into consideration. Um, in between, you guys kind of going over these munitions things and they set the guns back to their mm -hmm. home positions. Uh, I will have all of you guys make a perception check for me. You said perception. Perception. I gotta find my perception. There it is. <laughs> Killer is just like pretty good. <laughs> Oblivious. He's got his fairy on his shoulder. He's distracted. That's fair. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Naoki, you kind of like are kind of following the engineers. He's headed back towards, you know, the, the decks, the below decks, and something catches your eye in the water. Um, you take a look over the railing and peer down and you see this strange kind of almost humanoid dark shape beneath the surface oh, moving shit. by. Okay. Um, I'm going to reach out and say something to the engineer trying to get his attention before he can go below. And mention this to him. <clears throat> Along with, I'm assuming my party members are like right there with me, but they didn't see it. Uh, and Dominus and Lilyfoot are a little ways off uh, from where yeah. you have followed him. Um, so, and the engineer is already like by the time you turn around to call him out, he's like you know uh, rounding the corner to like get into the bastion. But you do catch one of the other dwarves, kind of like one of the deck hands, and he's like. Is this something to like be worried about? And you pointed out to him, you know, on this below the surface, and he grabs you by the shoulders, turns you around, is like, "Look away, look away." Okay. What is what is that? Up. Many a sailor have looked into the waves and seen things that took them under the surface, never to be heard of again. There are beings down there, terrible and dangerous. You need to listen very closely, as you must act quickly and carefully. I want you to go down there and say hi. What? And he pushes you over the railing, and you go tumbling <laughs> below the waves. Okay. Well, obviously I don't need to breathe, so I'm sitting underneath the water looking at, I guess, this human? thing? What as do I notice you, about this thing? As you're kind of like, you know, your, your momentum is slowing as you're like drifting down a feet, like 10 or so feet beneath the surface and you see these humanoid at least what you thought was humanoid it's almost more serpentine as you see like these kind of spines protruding across a long slithering back 
as this thing's body just whoosh, quickly darts past you in the water. All of a sudden, you turn around and you see this strange being with his face, with thrills all and along the sides of its face. The light from the sun above illuminating it through the surface of the water. It smiles at you with this mouth full of long, sharp, needly teeth. So it smiled at me, and it doesn't seem to immediately be hostile. I'm going to attempt to communicate with it using my magic speaking. Okay, what do you say? Hello. The thing kind of like cocks its head at you as you say that, and it's just like, kind of does a little wave of its fingers, and... As you, as it does that, you feel the strange tugging around your body as all of a sudden a rope is tied around your chest and you get yanked down, 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 deeper and deeper below the surface. I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Constitution saving throw, okay. Fourteen, okay. So as you're going down, 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 deeper and deeper, the pressure of the water just increases further and further, and you can feel like it just like pushing in on your head and your brain. But you're like, luckily being of the sort of physicality that you are, you're able to kind of like keep yourself steady and you know not be drowning. <laughs> and eventually you keep going down, down, deeper below the waves until you feel arms wrap around you and catch you kind of like stopping your moment your momentum and just holds you there and you hear this strange kind of gurgled bubbly sort of voice it says gotcha it said what gotcha oh okay you watch and see as you see these strange fish-like bodies floating by but they have arms with opposable thumbs and webs in between their fingers their heads are humanoid ish but they have frills and gills all over the place and their faces are all multicolored and with these bright blues and reds and greens and their skin is scaly all the way down Um, okay. The one behind you is kind of like holding you steady and it kind of turns you around to look at it and this one has like a mostly red face with these orange eyes with slit black slits going vertically through them. It kind of looks at you and says, Are you ready? Am I he? Is that what was said? Are you ready? Ready for what? <laughs> the way it said what? Ready for what? <laughs> <laughs> you feel the fish creature smack you on the back, and you hear him say, FLY! And you feel a spell cast on you, and all of a sudden, your body <sighs> begins to rocket up towards the surface. The pressure is like immediately leaving you as you're just like going up, up, up super fast until all of a sudden spoof, you go shooting out of the surface and you're arcing up into the air some 10 or 15 feet above the deck of the Mechanicus. I gotta need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me. <laughs> Okay, it's 12, not bad. You go flying up into the air and you kind of like 
hang in midair for a second as you reach like the 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 epitome of your trajectory. You just kind of look down and see the dwarf that pushed you over is just like, <laughs> and you go <laughs> tumbling back onto the deck. You kind of you catch yourself. You don't take any damage, but it's not necessarily the most graceful thing as you are now drenched from head to toe in seawater. Okay. Am I still near this dwarf that shoved me over? Yeah, you pretty much landed like pretty much right next to him. I'm going to pick him up by his beard. <laughs> Make a straight up strength check. Hope you pass this. Well, oh. <laughs> okay, I just yanked that dude's beard. Jesus. You, you go to grab his beard, and you kind of like, instead of grabbing the whole thing, you kind of like miss and just grab like a single strand and like pluck it from his chin. Oh, that hurts <laughs> worse. I'm cool with this too. <laughs> He's kind of just like, ah, hey, hey, it's all in the good fun. And, uh, you hear the sound from behind you, and uh, Lilyfoot and Indominus, you both see as the waves seem to be cresting like up over the railing. Not like coming onto the ship, but they're just like higher than the railing outside the ship. And basically riding the top of the wave, you see this strange fish creature. And beyond just like a serpentine tail and all the other features that I've already described, it also has legs that it kind of like uses to stand on top of this continually perpetual wave. And this That's creature's cool. adorned in just these like strings and uh, strings of like clamshells and barnacles and all this other sort of like, you know, deep sea sort of, uh, I guess, accessories. <laughs> <laughs> This one kind of like has a bright yellow face and with the orange eyes and the black slits through its eyes and it kind of uh, calls out and you see the captain, you know, kind of stepping out onto one of the, the balconies of the bastion and uh, this merfolk creature, as you come to realize they are, says, bring your metal toy out into the waves for a test run again. The captain just kind of starts a conversation up with him as uh, you guys see that a few other merfolk start to rise up, kind of like bringing themselves to a level with the Mechanicus. And uh, there's like a group of, you know, merfolk women that rise up kind of near the bow. And you watch as like the dwarf crew kind of like as they're working, like just elaborately stretched to like you know flex their muscles and be always like oh yeah macho mm -hmm. <laughs> and like the merfolk women just like pretend to swoon and just like start laughing at each other so the, the dwarf that I just plucked his beard I'm gonna ask him why the fuck would you just shove me over the railing like that you realize water hurts I lift up my fucking wet shirt and show him the pink belly that I got from landing hard. <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, go on. Don't tell me that you haven't at least gone swimming once in your life. Obviously, I have. I don't have a need to breathe, shithead. <laughs> he just kind of laughs to himself and... Uh, uh, you listen as the... You can, what you surmise to be like the leader of this merfolk tribe that is kind of like surrounding the Mechanicus at this present moment, uh, calls up to the captain and says, Well, I'm glad to hear that things are going well. Uh, things have been pretty calm down and beneath the waves. Nothing outside the usual. And he kind of looks over to catch your guys' uh, you know, sees the the unique passengers in the Pathfinder Initiative crew that is aboard the Mechanicus and says, 
Well, greetings, friends. It seems that some introduc introductions are in order. Who might you be? Indominus. You want to go first? <laughs> mm. You you probably have better um, people skills than I do. <laughs> I guess I'll look at the Morfeld person, uh, Chief. That's what I'll call him, I guess. Um, and kind of introduce us as the Pathfinder initiative that are on this voyage. Um, just to feel out and get a full understanding of the new vessel. Is the chief is the chief the one that launched me back up? No, he is not. But you did see okay. him. You did catch a glimpse of him down when you were being dragged below. Okay. Do I see in the merfolks that have arisen? Do I see the one that launched me? Um, on the opposite side of the ship from where he rose, uh, you notice that there are more merfolk kind of like coming to surface, and you do spot the one that. Uh, yeah, cast the uh, water walk spell on you while you were significant distance below the surface. Okay. Well, first I'm going to do this, and in this response, I'm also going to talk to that one. I am Professor Benny Nimdot. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for the loud. Thanks for the what? Launch, but it did not know how to fucking use the end there. <laughs> gotcha. Cool. He kind of like the uh, the merfolk who sent you up. Kind of like gives you a strange merfolkian salute, and it's just like any time, landlubber, and dives beneath the waves. Uh, the merfolk tribe leader kind of returns and says. Well, it is good to see that uh, the dwarves are actually following the rules. We like to keep our friends in check from time to time. They, their toys can get quite elaborate every once in a while. He kind of like does a strange sort of wink with like both eyes <laughs> at the captain. <laughs> <laughs> and the captain just kind of laughs. And uh, yeah. You guys kind of just like get to know the uh, Merfolk tribe a little bit. Um, when all of a sudden you hear one of the dwarves cry out from the bow as he said, you hear him say, Oh, son of a bitch! And he pulls an arrow, breaks it off from basically like in between his shoulder blades and you watch as one of the dwarves on the deck kind of looks up towards the sky and you watch as his eyes kind of like flash with arcane energy as he sends like a beam of power up towards the sky and there's a <laughs> as suddenly a fireball gets intercepted on route to the deck of the Mechanicus. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, from behind the glare of the sun, you see these shapes appearing in the sky, and they start fanning out into the airspace around the Mechanicus. You see these strange winged beasts, and you spot humanoid riders on their backs, and you start seeing arrows being <laughs> impacting the deck of the Mechanicus in various places and some of the dwarves end up taking hits and some spells get slung back and forth across the deck as all of a sudden you hear a ding da ding ding da ding general quarters general quarters we're under attack I'm gonna need everybody to roll initiative Not too shabby. Thank God. Just want to make note, I don't have a modifier for that, and I still rolled a goddamn 18. <laughs> that is pretty damn good, I gotta say. Uh, 
Okay. So we got Professor Benny Nimduck. We have our fairy cleric Lilyfoot. And our beloved Rage Monster Machine Indominus Rex. Go ahead and add your initiatives. Okay, let's see. So, the ship itself has an initiative. The dwarves have an initiative, and the merfolk have an initiative. Peeps! It's a good thing that you had the dwarf throw me overboard, because I had a question again. That would have slowed that down. Would it have slowed it down? Oh yeah, I would have slowed down the passage of time there with my next question. Oh, I see. Okay. So, you guys see as these shrouded hooded figures riding on Griffinback. These kind of hawk-like lion creatures with two large wings Talon's front and back claws, and a tail that is long and hooked, barbed at the end, flying through the air surrounding the Mechanicus. Indominus Rex, you are first up. What do you want to do? Well, since they're they're still all airborne, right? At this present moment, they are. And you see as uh, some of the dwarves begin rushing to the, the sides of the ship, beginning to unlatch and prepare the ballista. Alright, well I am going to attack with the crossbow. This Big guy, guy has a ranged weapon? Big guy has ranged Holy weapon. Crap, what? Yeah, I, I didn't know that you had ranged. That's awesome. I have a crossbow and a javelin. Oh snap. I remember yes. you grabbing the javelin because that was one of the things we got from the first round, right? Mm, can't Indeed. remember, but I do. Ha- I, I I came in with a cross crossbow. Uh, anyway, is d twenty plus six? Where's my roller? Actually, first, first, Fires. I'm going to rage. All right, let's do it. Rage up. <laughs> I'm raging, and I don't know. Hold on, I need to. Re- I- <laughs> wrong. <laughs> he was not prepared. I wasn't ready. Uh, that's not. Good. All right. Just so you guys know, this yellow box in the middle of the deck is uh, representing the bastion. So that technically is not an accessible area of the map for you guys to. So, you know. Oh. Even so if I go all the way, all the way to the top? <laughs> that's with your uh, crossbow or javelin? That's with my crossbow. Okay, that hits. Go ahead and roll that damage. Is... Uh, 1d8. Sorry, I don't use this weapon. <laughs> <laughs> New weapon, who dis? Let me verify that I don't have any other modifiers. Oh, I'm raged. That's it. I don't think it gives me any modifier. For a ranged weapon? Yeah, I don't know if it'll actually have an impact on that or not. No. Six points of damage? Six points of damage. And I'm going to do that again. Which one are you targeting? Uh, which one am I? Are, are these the things that we're attacking? Or are those the merfolk? So these, these blue guys are the merfolk. These white guys, dwarves, obviously. These kind of purpley ones with the uh, uh-huh. the daggers. Those are the enemies. Well, Currently, they are like twenty to thirty feet up into the air. Um, you know, on the griffin back. I'm not sure. Okay. Hey, what do we use the blue circle for above our names? 
Um, I think that was, I think with Snaz's rules, that, that was the uh, passive perception. Gotcha. So I'm gonna roll to hit again. Oh yeah, that's a definite hit. <laughs> and then I'm gonna roll for damage again. Hit. Nice. Solid. Same target? Same target. And then I'm okay. ranged, but does that give me... So those are your two attacks. Do you have any other actions those were you want two to? Attacks. That's um no no actions. I, okay. I, 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 yeah, I used my. Oh, you know what I should have done. Never mind. Sorry. It's good. It's good. You good? Okay. Yep, I'm good. <laughs> So, in a unusual uh, strategic maneuver, Indominus pulls out his crossbow, and <laughs> just a strange sight to see is it's like it almost seems mini in his grip as compared to just the size of Indominus. Oh. <laughs> but he pulls it up and quick fires. <laughs> Two bolts go flying and <laughs> embed themselves into the rider who almost gets knocked off the griffin, but is able to maintain his grip as he continues <sighs> swooping down, kind of like buzzing the railing alongside the uh, Mechanicus, and continuing on. Lilyfoot, your turn. Okie dokie. I am going to... Um... Figure out what 30 feet is first. Say that's that's five there, and then down. So she's actually gonna move forward to here. What's about twenty-five feet? Okay. Um, and then she is going to make a spell attack against that guy there. All right. Um, she's going to cast Chill Touch. Uh, Ooh. Okay. Feet. That's a definite hit. Alright. Does 2d8. Ooh, cold damage. Actually, it is necrotic. And it cannot uh, okay. regain hit points until the start of my next turn. It can't? It cannot. Wow, alright, good to know. So that does 6 damage. 6 damage. Very nice. Um, this one, right? I hit, um, yeah, and then since I hit, obviously, the, the hand or whatever, it's supposed to be like a ghostly skeleton um, that kind of hangs on the guy. Okay. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, so, wait, so it's like attached to him it. now? Yeah, it says it creates a ghostly skeletal hand in the space of a creature within range. Um, and then it says it can't, like, it goes on to talk about range spell attack, same thing. Uh, necrotic damage. You can't regain hit points till the start of your next turn until then the, he the hand clings to the target. Interesting. Okay. So that's what it says. Doesn't do anything other than just that. being there. <laughs> just being there. Interesting. Um, okay, I'm gonna... However... The... And it's, I don't believe that's an undead target, is it? It is... Yeah, you would... It is... Um, based off the of the effect that the spell has, you can discern that it is not undead. Okay, I was going to say, because if it is, it gets a disadvantage. Okay, it is not undead. Um, okay, um, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to cast a spiritual weapon, um, kind of in the form, we're probably just going to do a dagger. We'll okay. A dagger. Um, on the same, same guy. Gotcha, um, just in his space. Yeah. In his face, just right there next to him. Okay. Yeah, you can draw like a little shape to represent that and control it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be. I'll just put like a little circle. Just oh yeah, and you'd be attacking it. with it right away, right? Yes. Okay. That is correct. Thirteen does not hit though, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, that's represented in you cast your chill touch and send basically this skeletal spectral hand up to basically grab this guy's like the front of his shirt and he takes the impact and he looks down at the skeleton and 
like even from here, you see his eyes go wide, and he's just kind of like, what the? And his griffin kind of like goes on an unsteady flight path, and your spiritual weapon appearing hits the air where he just was before he tilted and kind of like pitched off to the side. Alrighty then. Is that, that that's that, everything you can do, right? That is everything I can do. Okay. Mr. Benny Nimdok, it is your turn, sir. We step onto the stairs here. And uh, I'm going to use my lightning chain. Do it. On these two fellows here. Knock him dead. So those that's like a, an attack roll against each of them, right? Well, it goes 60 feet in a row. Okay. And I know the way that we've been doing it is like... I've been able to hit both of them because it's it's a straight line. Oh, so are you casting like the lightning bolt spell? Well, it, it essentially is like that, yes. That's how we worked it out, is it's like lightning bolt. So like the way that we wrote it out was the stroke of lightning forms a line of 60 feet long uh-huh. and 5 feet wide, blasts out from me in a direction I choose. Yep. Each creature in the line must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, yeah. The creature takes 2d6 lightning damage on a fa- save, or half as much damage on the successful one, but I have a plus 8 on it, so it's 2d6 plus 8. Okay. So, like, I roll this. So, I don't know if any of them would have been hitting that. So, if it's just, if the, if the two hit is a dex save, uh, you don't need to roll anything. Um, one of them succeeds, one of them has a massive failure. So go ahead and roll damage for that. Twelve total? Yeah, it's twelve. Nice. Now, I do get, like, my little bonus thing. So I'm going to roll my 1d6 to see what type of bonus damage it is. Ah, okay. And then I roll one more d6 to determine how much. Um, What type is this? Normally... That's what I'm actually pulling up right now, because I didn't have that window open. We've been doing RP stuff so long, I forgot to open up my fucking... (laughs) my roll tables. How do I fight? I don't know anymore. Alright, so for that... That's Harnessing the Chaos. Show more. So it's going to be extra lightning damage. Oh, good. (laughs) Very fitting. And it's three Ooh, more nice. lightning damage, so 15, 15 lightning. total. Okay, wow, good. So boom. Nice. So the first one in the line takes the full brunt of it and... <laughs> he just, like, is, like, even still reverberating from the impact. Um, seeing as you hit the first one so directly, the line has, it like, you know, is kind of lessened as it goes around him into the next target. And he only ends up taking a total of seven damage instead. But that is a good round. So that leaves him there. Is there anything else you wish to do? Nope, I've already moved and I've done that. Cool. Thank you. It is now the Mechanicus' turn. And you guys watch as the rear battery of turrets begins to rotate. Uh, Lulefoot, one of the dwarves standing next to you kind of like grabs you and is just like, watch your head! As the barrels <laughs> haven't been raised yet, they're just rotating into place and nearly like clips the top of your head. Mm. And he says, you might want to cover your ears! As one of the barrels elevates up to like a 30 degree angle, and then 
Uh, so I'm gonna do... Let's just see... Oh yes, that will definitely do it. You watch as one of the um, swooping past the Griffin Riders uh, with the, you know, the cloak that's covering and this scarf that's covering across their face. All of them have the similar garb. But as this thing fires into the air, this one unlucky, unlucky pair gets caught in it. And you watch as this fire and smoke clears. This guy just disappears in a puff of red mist and feathers. <laughs> yeah, it's the war crimes. <laughs> Benny approves. You got my stamp of approval, my friend. This this thing needs to be mass produced. We need a million of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> and now it comes down to their turn. So a few of them are going to be taking shots down at the dwarves. Do, do, do. Wow, all of those are great. So yeah, shooting from the griffins. <laughs> poo, 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 poo. Do, 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 do. A bunch of arrows land with the arrow heads being buried into the wood on top of the deck of the ship, missing their targets. Uh, one of the assailants does end up actually jumping off of his griffin going into a roll uh let's do this check real quick okay yep that's a pass does a does a small roll kind of gets back up on his feet and does a bolt of lightning of his own so i'm going to have to roll some checks for these dwarfies over here Okay, okay. Pretty oh. decent. Even still, that uh, is an official HD6. Yes, so one of them goes unconscious. The other one takes it like a champ and hefts his axe out of his uh, out of the sling as on his hip and is preparing to go for an assault. Uh, da, da, da. Meanwhile, each of you are going to be shot at as well. Okay, so each of those are plus six to hit, so Lilyfoot does a 12 hit you. 12? No. Okay. Uh, Benny Nimdak, does a 19 hit you? Yes. Okay, so that's going to be... Seven piercing damage. Oh, I am so hurt. Let me, let me credit that. Plus two poison damage. Oof. Oh, I'm... I love poison though. Oh, <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I'm going to need you to make a constitution saving throw for me. I will. He's like, gladly. <laughs> this is like my shenanigans. These people are my... Are they my family? What? I need details on these people once we kill them. <laughs> also, uh, Indominus, I'm thinking a 23 hits you. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So you're raging. So you take one My point constitution of... is fucking massive wow. right now. Shit. Yeah. You... You feel like the burning sensation coursing up your arm, but it immediately begins to dissipate as you shrug it off. Not gonna lie, I thought that was damage against Indominus for about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy fuck! That would be fuck. ridiculous. <laughs> so I took, what, seven and then two, right? Yeah. Yep. Alright, so... Um... Indominus, that is six poison damage inflicted upon you, and I'm going to need a constitution saving throw from you as well. Oh. Okay, that passes. You also feel this burning sensation begin to course through your body as you take this arrow to your shoulder, 
but you shrug it off and you're just like, too mad to be sick. <laughs> Another merfolk. Crashing out from the surface. You guys watch Lilyfoot, you have a perfect view of this as it goes by. This massive shark lunges out of the surface and crashes above, spraying water all over the place. It is this massive thing that two merfolk are kind of riding the back on and they're holding onto these ropes that basically like tie to the, the barding that this thing has on its in its mouth. It's this, it's this tiger shark kind of being where it has like the black and orange pattern stripes, but it scales all across and the edges between where the colors alternate are kind of splotchy. And it has like these two catfish-like whiskers protruding off of its snout and its jaw opens wide with these several rows of teeth as it jumps up and tries to snatch at one of the flying griffin pairs going nearby. Unfortunately, the thing tucks and rolls and pitches out of the way and kind of like flies under this thing's belly as it goes in its arc. Um, the thing roars as it goes yes. <laughs> down back into the waves. But as it passes by, uh, it gets struck with a lightning bolt from one of the other griffin riders. And you watch as the electricity courses across its scales and into the water and dissipates, the thing twitching and throbbing as it does so. However, this thing's tail, which is now out of the water and arcing back down into the waves, this big dorsal fin with this very tall upper half that's very sharp in the end, slaps to the side and just <laughs> smacks one of the griffin pairs out of the air. Both their bodies broken and totally destroyed, tumbling down into the waves. Mm. Uh, they're going to make some attacks against the other pairs. One's a miss, one's a success. Um, you guys watch as on the opposite side of the ship, a couple of the merfolk kind of ride up on a wave that they're summoning and begin spinning these hooks on ropes quicker and quicker. And they send them up into the air as they wrap around one of the griffin's bodies. The merfolk tug tight and pull the rope taut against the griffin's body as its wings <laughs> snap to its sides and it goes full nosedive <laughs> down into the water. So we're going to say that these ones are submerged. Which ones? And this guy down here is submerged and grappled. Okay. Dwarves are going to be making their attacks. So two dwarves here. Oh boy. So even with the plus six, that's only going to be... Yeah, it's not going to hit. So unfortunately, you guys watch as the two dwarves manning the ballista start firing into the air. They basically are holding these triggers down and spinning these cranks. And as they do so, a stream of continuous arrows goes flying into the air. Every third or fourth arrow has its head lit on fire to act as a tracer. And you see these streams beginning to like emerge from the sides of the Mechanicus up into the air on either side, shooting towards the Griffin Riders, but unfortunately not making their mark just yet. And Dominus, we're back up to you. I'm going to shoot this guy. Ooh. Which guy? Oh, that, that, guy. Uh, that guy. Do it. 24 hit. Oh, that's a definite hit. Roll that damage. Yeah. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah. 
Um, Ooh, nice. I'm gonna do you it. Got a second again. shot with that too. Yep. Fifteen hit. Fifteen just misses. So you do get one shot off as it impacts, and the Griffin Rider kind of looks at you and kind of seems to make a strange hand motion towards you, and you kind of feel this sort of like magical effect kind of take a hold of you. Uh, you can't help but feel as if you've been marked as a target. Hmm. Gotcha. Um. Well, uh. Don't think. Rage, vanish, or something. Yep, I don't have any more attacks. Okay. If that's all for you, then we will move on to okay. Lilyfoot. Okay, uh, Lilyfoot's going to move another 30 feet forward, which are there. Um, okay. Then she is going to pass. We'll do Guiding Bolt. Level, first level spell slot. Okay. Um, Targeting. We'll actually do this guy here. Yeah, it's lined up with me. Light him Still up. Plus nine. That misses, though. That is not a hit. Your guiding bolt goes soaring towards this guy, and he puts his griffin into a nosedive for a second, and the, the bolt goes clean over his head. He pulls up again, and he's basically like bearing his griffin straight at you right now. I am going to, I guess, then move my spiritual weapon. Uh, oh, if I can grab a hold of the goddamn thing. There we go. I move the spiritual weapon. I can move, I believe, up to sixty and make an attack. Just... My spiritual weapon. Yeah, it moves up to sixty. Yeah, I'll say that you, if you wanted yeah. to try and attack that same one with it, you could. Yeah, I was just double checking first. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go ahead and attack. Perfect. Now that is a hit. So that's gonna do. 1d8 plus 1. 8 damage. A nice 8 damage. Tasty. I'm down to that. If I did my math correctly, which I think I did. So you... He kind of dug, ducks underneath your guiding bolt, and you kind of just bring the spiritual weapon up into his path as he kind of, like, comes back up, and... It just stabs him right in the chest. Takes the hit, but it seems that like he's still coming on pretty strong. Is that everything from Lilyfoot? That is everything. Alright. We're back to Nimduck. Take care of business, friend. You might have stepped away, though. No, I'm here. I'm, I'm typing. Oh, I don't know how to use that fancy dice roller you guys use. Oh, the, um... The one where it's kind of like in the tray? Right. Yeah, I usually use the chat for the right rolls, too. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at it. Does an 11 hit? What are you attacking with? Uh, I'm using my firebolt. Ah, okay. So unfortunately, no. The firebolt goes flying towards one of the riders, and he definitely <sighs> swoops out of the way. Fair enough. Do you have a second attack as well? Um, I mean, when I use spells, I don't believe I can. But I mean, I have a two-weapon fighting, and I'm holding two javelins. But I don't think I can attack after I use a spell. So I think I'm just going to move. Okay. I'm going to move 
because I can't see. Let's see. Can I use... Let me see real quick. How does this work before I... <clears throat> okay. Alright, so I'm going to move my 60 feet. To be right... Oh. Yeah, is it my movement? 60? Oh, no, that's dash. Yes, that'd be your sorry. Speed. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Very <laughs> good. I'm gonna move to this other ladder. Like, the other staircase. Okay, sounds good. Ship's turn. <laughs> so you go past one of the uh, other dwarves, and he's, like, actively loading a crossbow of his own and tr about to uh, take some shots off into the sky. Is that your turn? That is my turn. Okay. We're back to the Mechanicus. As this has all been going on, you guys kind of notice that the remainder of the batteries have been brought to bear, and uh, one of the dwarf, the dwarf next to you, Lilyfoot, kind of like glances over and is like, "Oh, yep." Knowing that you're like not particularly fond of these, he calls out, "Broadside!" <laughs> <laughs> All of the guns go off into the air as they fire. That's gonna be... Do, 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 do. A pretty good chunk of damage. Uh, you watch as basically the whole section of sky gets cleared right over here. One of these guys, the one that was headed straight for you, Lilyfoot, the battery launches a projectile straight in his direction, and poof, he is gone. <laughs> the remainder... Big puff of feathers. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, so, this guy topples to the deck, and he is looking very rough. These guys... I'm actually going to have them roll dexterity saves to see who makes it. Okay, wow, they all just barely make it. Ba -ba -ba. You see all of these figures land and tuck and roll and come up to bear on the, uh, the deck of the Mechanicus, their griffins plummeting down into the ocean behind them. It's almost as if they're kind of like kamikazeing just so they can get aboard. And it comes around to their turn. Uh, this guy is going to come up here and finish him off. This dwarf is now dead. Uh, so these two are going to come up to him. We're going to be seeing some strikes. Guys, a plus six to hit. Jesus. So one of them misses, one of them hits. And then that's gonna be. Yeah. So their combined efforts, this dwarf goes unconscious as well. Um, and then coming for each of you is strikes from above. So Lilyfoot, does, does an 11 hit? An 11, no. Okay. Benny, does a 17 hit? Nope. Is that Benny responding? Yeah. Okay, 17 doesn't hit? No, I said yep. Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay, okay. okay. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is... Three piercing damage. Plus an additional four poison damage. And now I'll need you to make another constitution saving throw for me. Meanwhile, 
And Dominus, does a 19 hit you? Yes. Does 18 beat the con save? 18 does beat the con save. You feel that poison rushing through your veins again, but you are just so full of chemicals that I can't even grab a hold of you. <laughs> so I'm you have to teach these people how to make better poison. <laughs> So I believe that's four damage in Dominus of Piercing. In addition, you take five poison. And I will need you to make another constitution saving throw as well. Constitution um, is... Oh yeah. Damn. No worries whatsoever. Okay. I'm gonna say this guy is out of the fight because the Merfolk's turn's coming up and I don't feel like dealing with him anymore. <laughs> but all of these dar um, dark figures jump off of their griffins and tuck and roll to land on the deck of the Mechanicus and pull these strange daggers beginning to uh, brandish them and prepare for battle. Merfolk, let's see how much opportunity they have to do some damage. Oh yeah, that's very good. All of those hit. So let's do a quick... Oops. I can figure out how to type. Oof, that's rough. Well, at least it's something, right? Pull these guys down to that. Okay. So, all of the merfolk, the shark would, you know, kind of jump up to try to grab stuff, but unfortunately all of the enemies are either on the deck or on the opposite side of the ship. However, the merfolk along the side of the ship where they are sling their hooks up into the air and kind of latch on and slice and tear through some of these griffins' bodies as they inflict their harm. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. This guy's gonna rush over here, this guy's gonna rush over here, and... This guy's gonna stay there and stay there. So I'm gonna do. See, this is why I prefer my system as opposed to DD 5e because this is just so much work on my part. I like making <laughs> you guys roll all the time. <laughs> so the dwarf over here, boom, rushes up with his axe and cleaves this man down to the deck in a spray of blood. The uh, dwarves manning the gun, the one who can actually take shots. That's an 18, so that does hit. Finally, that does. Doo -doo 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 -doo. A nice 4d6 of damage. Look at that. <laughs> and you guys watch as this one dwarf <laughs> running through the arrows. The stream of bolts goes tearing through one of the griffins, and it squawks as it begins to plummet down towards the ocean. Uh, we'll call that that. I gotta make one last roll, because that's how Dungeons & Dragons works. And yeah, no, he is submerged. He goes tumbling into the waves and cannot make it to the deck. Okay, Indominus, we're back to you. I'm gonna move over here. And, um. <laughs> Indominus is going to pull his Warhammer and start smashing. Smashy, smashy. I'd like to see a smash. Does an 11 hit? Unfortunately, no, that is not a hit. Though I do believe you get 
That will do the trick, indeed. Roll your damage, good sir. Uh, damage on that one was... 1d10. Ten. All right. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my um, unarmed strike, which is a straight d6 if I hit. Okay. So yep. Roll to attack and then for damage. Uh, mm. I'm assuming an eight doesn't attack. Doesn't hit. No. No. Not quite. Okay. Then I'm done. So you take a couple of hefty swings with your hammer at this guy, and he's like very roguish, and he's just dodging. Woof, woof. But you do catch him on the back swing once, and kind of knock his legs out from underneath him as he falls to the deck. He immediately kind of springs back up to his feet as you go in for the unarmed strike with your foot to kind of like pin him to the deck. But he dodges out of the way too quick. I still know last one. I don't know that. Lilyfoot. Crush his dreams. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lilyfoot's going to move another 30 feet into touchable range. Hoping. Pray Hulk to range. God. Poke him in the face. <laughs> and hopefully, I'm just going to grab the back of, hold, the back of this guy's neck and inflict wounds. Ooh, that sounds nasty. I hope so. Oh yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> Fuck yes, finally! Oh, I'm so excited to see just the output of this. this I game. am hoping. I'd like to see you just so... like one shot wither this man away. <laughs> I hope so. So this is this is uh I'm I'm casting out on third level. Okay. So that's oh, third a level. 10. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 24 damage. <laughs> Alrighty. So you reach. This guy is kind of like distracted and like taking a look at the gun battery that is you know in front of him, as the cannons are rotating again, switching to spin to face the other side of the ship. And you just kind of catch him by surprise and just, yeah, literally grab the back of his neck and send this necrotic energy coursing through his body. He stiffens up as he's like, Ugh! Ugh! he is, he kind of like starts to shake a little bit. Like you can see like his body like quivering, but he is still standing. So as the bonus action, I'm going to bring my, that needs to change color. Jesus Christ, you can't see that. Way to go. There we go. There it is. <laughs> We're gonna uh, attack the same dude and hopefully stab him inside with the spiritual weapon. Do it. End him. That's one, two. 21 hit. Wow. That's the same number twice. That's crazy. It definitely does work. 11 damage. <laughs> With exact lethal, how would you like to end this man's life? I'm I'm hoping that as I grab him in the back of the neck and he starts getting like just covered in necrotic damage, that I just kind of call my spiritual weapon and just stab him clear into the fucking rib cage, right into the lungs, <laughs> just right up into the side. Nice. It's, and he like has his daggers ready too. So you like as you kind of spin him around, and he's got like his eyes look bloodshot from the effect of the spell that you cast on him. And it's just like he's kind of got this white, like exasperated look on his face, like he's out of breath. And you're just like, hmm, nice knife. You grab your spiritual weapon, and he's just like, oh, 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 collapses to the deck. Fuck yeah. Is that the end of uh, Lilyfoot's turn? That, that is the end of her turn. All right. Has our uh, resident plague doctor returned? Yes, I have returned. Okay. What would you like to do, sir? Foe is in the front. No. Fro is in the sky. Foe is in the back. Too many foes, well, not enough hoes. 
Well, no, there will be several hopes soon. Um, so, I would like to use my inspiration. Okay, sure. I'll say that you can, I mean, typically that is used if you fail a roll, you can choose to use the inspiration to grant yourself advantage in that moment, is the way I'm playing it. Yeah, okay, so that's why I was wanting to use it, was like just to make sure that yes. I have it. I want to use inspiration for my hit roll, is what I'm trying to do. Yes, yes. So, roll for hitting. Uh, which attack are you going for here? Um, I'm going for lightning chain on this shithead. Okay. Okay, and so that's the dexterity save one, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Let me real quick... Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Five foot wide line. So you'll just barely miss this guy, uh, this dwarf here. <laughs> I, I, I have been looking at the battlefield. Yep, yep. As a good tactician, good. I don't want to hit my friends. I had to. When you were <laughs> putting all the enemies into my line of sight here, I couldn't mm -hmm. tell at the beginning which ones were bad guys. I was like, oh, I'm just going to line up and shoot all of these guys because you got like, four <laughs> people with, with mermaids and the flying people. Yeah. I was like, I don't know which one I'm going to shoot. Cool. Is that your dexterity saving throw there? there? That is a failed dexterity save, my friend, so go ahead and roll full damage against this man. Oh, so just roll damage? Okay. Yeah, that's not like that's uh certain spells won't have it to hit. They'll just like if they save, they save. Sometimes it will sometimes it'll do nothing, sometimes it'll have a min a minor effect. That's kind of okay. the nature of the lightning bolt. Okay. Eleven damage. Very sad. Um, so... I don't think oh, yeah. Radiant's gonna do anything, really, but... Well, you know, hey, hey. it's extra damage there. Holy thunder! Yeah, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm trying my best <laughs> to be, to be, you know, a paladin at this moment. Very nice. I like it. Represent. And I did, I did five additional radiant damage to it. You burn his retinas. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you send this, like, divine bolt of energy <laughs> coursing through his body, and you're just like... I get an idea which way you're headed as he collapses to the neck. The fuck you say to me, you little shit? <laughs> was that the end of your turn, or...? Yeah, that was... Well, I would like to move again, since I okay. haven't moved yet. Yep. So... Definitely. I'm gonna go join my dwarf brother here. Man the, the ballista. Actually, I'm. Can I man the other ballista? You can. I'm going to man the other ballista. Oh shit! <laughs> so as you run up and kind of like get yourself in the station, you look at the controls and you're a little disoriented at first. You're just like, uh, uh, and then you kind of look over at the other dwarf and he looks over at you and he's like, "Yep, yeah, crank that. Just keep rotating. Hold down that trigger." Use the joystick to steer! It just kind of like takes you a second, like but this. you kind of grab it, hold on to it, you do a quick test crank, and a few arrows go off into the sky, just you know, not hitting anything, but you have effect effectively crewed the, the rapid fire ballista. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I have a gun. <laughs> Now I have, have a essentially gun. a gun. This is where Nimdok <laughs> achieves his dream. <laughs> Do -do -do. So, the guns begin to be brought to bear once again. And unfortunately, they have to rotate all the way around from basically 180, 180 degrees from where they had been previously in order to find any targets. So, 
they really are only been able to take out this one guy out front. But even still, the front guns... <laughs> Lilyfoot <laughs> again gets a little rocked to her core as she seems to go wherever the next shot is going to be coming from. <laughs> He's gonna scream and I fucking hate these things! <laughs> hey, hey, Jirax is like... I'm gonna check my pocket watch while these things are turning and be taking notes on uh, how these guns spin, like how fast they can spin from one direction to another. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh, I'll even just tell you straight up, taking note of kind of like, you know, keeping track of their motion and you know, speed and kind of the intervals at which they can fire. Uh, yes. They can rotate 90 degrees in a span of 60 seconds and fire. Not 60, okay. 6. I'm sorry, 6. Okay. So takes them from going over here to over here, 90 degrees, that took 6 seconds for them to reload and fire. Awesome. So, 36 seconds to be able to go in fully direct in all directions. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, just, I, I, I just want to tell you, I'm going to have you do my nothing again. Oh boy, here we go. I feel like it's going to be completely unnecessary, but I'm here for it. Yes! <laughs> this dwarf gets finished off by these cloaked figures. And uh, this guy advances to make some swings against you, Lilyfoot. Do, 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 do. I'm guessing a 12 doesn't hit. No, it doesn't. God dang. Can I get a single hit on you? Okay, does a 15. It does. <laughs> Alright, so this guy comes up. You dodge out of the way of his first strike, but as you are dodging, you kind of like lean off to one side. He brings his other hand up to bear and kind of gets you in the side as you're leaning in that direction. Mm. So that's going to be... One, piercing damage. Holy crap. Crazy. <laughs> On top of another uh, six poison damage. And I'm going to need to make you... need you to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, plus four, okay. Twelve. Oh boy, so that just mm -hmm. misses. Shit. And you feel the poison course through your body and it burns all through your arms. And you're just like, crap, this is not gonna be good. You are effectively poisoned. So your attacks and such have disadvantage. Fuck. Okie dokie. Uh, da Indominus. Yes. Indominominos. Oh boy. Indominos? Indominos. What I'm thinking the that fuck a is that? 26 <laughs> and a 25 hit. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna roll three d eights for the piercing. So that's twelve piercing damage coming your way, but you're raging, right? Yes. So that's six. So then this is gonna be so particularly two d six four d six. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be rolling six d six poison damage against you. Ooh. Twenty. <laughs> wow! Out. How much? Twenty-five 25? poison damage. Son of a bitch! <laughs> wait shit. a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold on! Don't die, big guy! Not on this ship. We have shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Constitution. Um. You still up, bud? Oh yeah, no, I'm still up. You said that was 
25 damage, and I still have to roll constitution saving throw. Yes, yes you do. That crit though, oof. Sorry, oof. Uh, constitution saving throw was plus seven. Okay, you pass. So, How the right. fuck? That's insane. This guy, kind of dodging between all of your attacks, flips his blades midair and literally just kind of wraps his legs around your neck and brings you to the ground. And you are just getting eviscerated by this guy. Fucking right is the, the most hurt. Well, not the most hurt, but one of the most hurt Indomus has ever been. You can tell that these guys have a very serious set of training in combat. Dwarf guys. There's not a ton of them left. Okay. He's gonna come up here. He says, Don't you touch that fairy! Let's see if he is. Let's see if he is. It does hit! Hey, look at that! Good job. Way to go, dwarf guy. I'm gonna roll these. Okay, so not crazy, but he did do something. So he comes up and kind of knocks the knives aside and <laughs> slashes this guy across the face with his axe. Uh, this other dwarf is uh, going to try to make strike against that's not a real roll let's see that'll be a 15 which misses unfortunate that's okay indominus we're back up to you sweet all right um... this guy is just all up in your business right now yeah well indominus is pissed and he's going to shift. Shifting right, grants yes. me 10 temporary experience or health. Experience. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> um, Level up. Right. Uh, so that gives me 10 temporary. And then now that gives me my second bonus action, which I'm going to need. But first, I'm going to attempt to smash this motherfucker with a uh, with my fucking warhammer that is a hit does a 20 hit it does <laughs> go ahead and cave this guy's head in so d10 plus 5 I believe I don't know check your character sheet dude I'm checking my character sheet it's a d10 <laughs> plus 5 10 nice damage. 10. Beautiful. Is he still standing? He is. He takes the hit and he is looking like blood is coming out of his mouth. And he's like, he's basically like fighting for his life right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to use one of my bonus actions. Mm -hmm. If he's fighting for his life, that means he's probably pretty well on health. You could assume so, uh, yes. I'm going to use my long to shifting strike as uh -huh. I shifted. And that does a. Oh, I got to attack first. Uh, yeah, let's see if you hit. It's a good That's idea. That's a plus eight to hit. I'm assuming since, you know, some of those lower does rolls. hit. Alright, so that is going to do 1d6 plus 5 piercing damage. I think this is going to do the job. Do the deed. More nine, than enough. I can kill him. You bring your warhammer back, catch him with the legs again, send him to the ground, and just curb stomp him in the head. <laughs> Snap his neck. <laughs> Alright, so that was one Warhammer hit, and one, right, yeah, one, two, three, four, alright, so, I'm still allowed to move, right? You have not moved yet. 
You got all your movement points still. I'm gonna move over here then. I know that's yep. less than 30 feet. I actually have. I'm pretty sure it is. 50 feet now. I, I've got more than 30 feet movement speed now. I got 40. So either Dude. way. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Cheese and rice, um, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to use my second attack and Lit. hit this guy with my Warhammer. 19, I'm assuming, hits. Ah, uh, you're going strong here. He That's is. 1d10 One plus 5. Endless. That's 13. Oof, good hit, good hit. Is he still standing? Oh, yes. He takes the hit and he's, like, this guy is, is, is fresh to the deck of Mythomechanicus and doesn't seem to have been, uh, so that's the first hit he's taken, essentially. Okay. Well, then I'm going to use my unarmed strike, which just does, uh, just does six damage when it hits. Okay. Still got to roll the hit. Uh, does nine hit? <laughs> no. No, unfortunately. No. No. Well, I guess he laughed at that, but... Yeah, so... You go for, like, you smack him with the hammer and, like, try to, like, basically grab him to, like, slam his head into the railing of the stairway. But he ducks out of the way, now knowing that you're there, being harried from either side by opponents. <laughs> Done? Yep, that ends my turn. Lily foot. Yay! All right, so she is going to hopefully reach out, grab a hold of this guy, whether it be his arm, neck, what have you. Uh -huh. uh, hoping to cast, uh, we're gonna do a first level inflict wounds. Okay. 17. That is a hit. Fuck yeah. It's a 3d10. Oof, not looking good for this guy. I fucking hope not. 12. And Very then nice. As you reach I'm... out and basically oh, just grab him by the throat, you're just like, uh uh. <laughs> and he collapses under your grip. Alrighty. Um, so I'm going to then. Ooh, sending that the wrong way. Hopefully, send my dagger um, into this gentleman here. You can do that, for sure. 17 hit? 17 does hit! Sweet. They have a 16 AC. That's, that's twice in a row she's done double. I know, it's so weird. Max damage. Nice. Fuck oh, yeah. Yeah, it, he had one, he has 13 health, but I'm just gonna give it because that's just too cool. Just throw it. <laughs> It's like, as you kind of like watch the guy collapse in front of you under your grip, the um, the guy who's standing behind him kind of looks at you, preps his daggers as if he's going to like whip them at you, and you're just like, no, me first. <laughs> Straight between the eyes. Fuck yeah. Is that it? Um... She's actually going to hopefully let me see actually space here. She's gonna move all the way forward. Okay, she's gonna get into uh, into combat range with that guy. Yep, and I think for the most part that's gonna be it for her, other than moving into range with that guy. Okay. Good doctor, I do believe it is your turn. Yes, well, I now have this giant gun. You do have a giant gun, and there aren't very many griffins still in the sky, but there are definitely targets to pick from. Correct. Um, now, just one thing. Does this ballista, does it turn in a 360, or is it just mounted, like, one direction with, like, uh, 180 degrees of, like, rotational force? Yeah, it's pretty much, it's more like a 120 degree range. 120? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the guy that's flying over here is within that range. He is. Perfect. Okay. So you will be rolling with a plus five to hit. And with the guidance of the, uh, the dwarf nearby, I'm going to give you advantage on this. Just because it's fucking Okay. Cool. 
Um, so is it just a d20 then? Plus d20. 5? Yep, d20 plus 5. And do it twice. Oh, that's a definite hit, for sure. So my good sir, I would like you to roll 4d6 piercing damage for me. Nice, nice, nice. So, you bring the gun to bear, and as you're, like, shifting this thing, you're kind of expecting it to be heavy and unwieldy, but it's, like, very impressive, actually, the way that you can kind of just shift it and it glides along the ball bearings of the interior mechanisms. And even just, like, kind of lifting, there's, like, hydraulic pistons that kind of hold the positioning of it in place so you can just easily just shift your weight slightly and it'll push the tip down or pull it up, depending on what you want. As you see a target flying past, you turn that crank and arrows just go pelting all along the side of this one griffin. It squawks as it goes plummeting towards the ocean. I'm going to make a save for the rider. What happened here? Nope, he is submerged. Sploosh! Down into the waves he goes. Get fucked, guy. Oh, is that everything Poison you arrows. Is that everything um, you wanted to do? Well, yeah, considering there's no more flying boys, I would like to move as well. Okay. I'm going to move up to this guy here. Did or could I get past the dwarf? Yeah, there's, there's room to get past him, yeah. Okay. Do you have any actions you're going to make against him this turn, or are you tapped out? Well, I used that gun, so I guess that I, that would have been my only action. Unless I have an opportunity. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, that would only be if he were to disengage from you, so... Gotcha. Likely not. Okay, so the Mechanicus itself... Yeah, again, the flying targets are kind of pretty much taken care of, so the big guns can't really shoot at things on the deck itself. Uh, the merfolk... Yeah, the merfolk just clean pickings for uh, those guys. Back to the dwarves. Let's see. Okay. Dwarf 1. Going for a strike on... This guy gets a 15, which is a miss. This guy keeps swinging back and forth, but the guy who's in between uh, Indominus and the dwarf seems to be quite deft as he like grabs onto the railings and pushes himself up so that he goes above the dwarf's axe swing. He's like, friggin' shorty. The other dwarf comes up and will join you, Professor. Wow, they are not great at uh, combat today for some reason. Hand to hand, these sailors are having a rough go of it. Hey, he got a 20, he actually did something, wow. Nice. I feel like I might have rolled different dice. Oh, well. It's fine. Did 14 damage to him, which is solid. Very so nice. 20. Cool, cool, cool. But the, the one dwarf comes up and goes for a swing, attempts to bring his axe down. Instead, he chops down into the deck of the Mechanicus. Uh, while the other, uh, while the, the cloaked figure dodged out of the way, the other dwarf comes up from behind him and cleaves him clean in the back. Does some damage, but the guy is still standing. So I'm just going to ask for the flavor here. Are all the people that we've knocked off into the water, or have been knocked off into the water, have they been getting eaten by the shark that got zapped? Uh, as you say that, you see the beast <laughs> crest over the water on this side of the ship this time, and you can see just like there's like 
griffin wing hanging out of its mouth, all the feathers wet and drenched, just kind of like trailing off as it goes, and then sploosh, dives back into the waves. I'm gonna holler, soon. good boy. <laughs> It's kind of like majestic looking. It almost kind of looks a little bit cute the way that its eyes are and like kind of like the long catfish whiskers. It's very adorable. We're back to Indominus. Sorry, same thing. Um, except I just realized um, I've been giving myself two two points of disadvantage this whole time with my Warhammer. Um, but I'm going to hit him with my Warhammer. Or attempt to. 12 hit. No. Nine doesn't hit. No. Well, what about... Try my unarmed strike. 16 hit? That just hits, good sir. Did you Sparta kick this dude or what? So he's <laughs> going to take six damage of bludgeoning. Okay. And then I'm going to do my long tooth shifting strike. Ah, okay. And does not Oof. hit. So, wow, he's he's an agile fucker. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> you would not believe. <laughs> you watch as he's like doing acrobatics on top of the rail. Like he's not even on the stairs anymore. He's on the railing where you would like hold your like with your hand to go down the stairs, just dancing across this rail. As you you do get a hit in, but he again catches himself and steadies himself, readying his daggers to go in for more strikes. Uh, mm. uh, that's my so you did do. You did. Wait. Oh, six damage. You said right. From the uh, arm yeah. string. Six bludgeoning. Yes. Okay. So that brings him down to. That. Yeah. Cool. 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 Leafwood. Back to you. I am hoping to grab a hold of this guy too. Hopefully going to hit him with a third level inflict wounds. You just like hugging people around the neck, don't you? I'm hoping so. <laughs> 16 hit? Just hits. <laughs> that is their AC. I like a third level inflict wounds. I mean, it is a 5d10. Oh my 32 god! 32 damage. <laughs> Even if this guy were to go into a phase where he would be making death saving throws, he wouldn't have the opportunity because he went negative of where he was currently and is insta dead. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so because I see Benny and that guy fighting, we're going to move the dagger behind that guy. Okay. Hoping to hit him. I, I hope you hit him. I fucking hope I hit him, too. <laughs> <laughs> too, I would like it to hit him, not 21. me. 21. That is a hit, for sure. Roll me that damage. 10 damage. Very nice. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oops. Okay, there we go. You send the dagger into this guy's back, and seeing as now he's got like four enemies, he's like, you know, obviously, he's distracted as he's trying to keep track of all the incoming attacks, but also, like, you can tell that, like, he's starting to slow his movements, like, his one leg is really not looking that great, and he's kind of, like, favoring it. He's, uh, in a rough spot. I think a perfect spot where, uh, the good old professor could finish him off. Uh, well, I got a quick question for you. Are these dwarves actually, like, dead dead, or can they be, like, healed and brought back? Uh, they were making death saves, but then they took, uh, two melee hits, which made them dead dead. Okay. Gotcha. Alrighty, then I'm done. No. Okay. Naoki. Hey, Nope. Trying to decide if I want to capture this guy or if I want him to die. 
What would Nimdok that- do? Well, Nimdok would attempt to capture this guy for experiments. <laughs> but well, but he also has questions. As a very inquisitive person, he wants to know who the fuck this guy is. So, like, if I accidentally kill him, I would just shrug it off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm trying to figure out, like, he, he really... looks really fucked up. So, like, I'm trying to figure out if I can. What's your What's your strength modifier? Uh, I have zero strength modifiers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's not in the uh, that's not in the uh, the cards. Dex dexterity has something. Uh, what weapons? So does like, constitution. What, what what weapons do you have on your person? I mean, I have javelins, darts. Um, I can grab this dude and zap him with shocking grass. So I got my lightning chain. Um. On me, I also have 20 foot of chain. Hmm, okay. Uh, And I have a spell. So you don't have anything bludgeoning. No, I don't have bludgeoning. What I I mean... What you can do, you can grab... Well, I have a quarterstaff. You have a quarterstaff? Yeah, I have a quarterstaff. That's one of my weapons. Hit him with your shillelagh stick. (laughs) I can hit him with my cane. I can hit him with the pimp cane. (laughs) If you use your quarterstaff to just thwack this guy on the head, I will allow you to do non-lethal damage. Okay. Well, that is exactly what I'm going to attempt. It's not my boomstick, it's literally just a stick. So you will need to uh, roll an attack for that to see if you hit. And unfortunately, that is a negatory hit. Okay, well, since I used a melee weapon, and I still have a melee weapon available, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to hit this dude with my returning javelin. Ah, okay. Because I'm using my two-handed combat now. <laughs> Go for it. He's probably going to die. So unless I miss a, again. This is a straight d20 check as your offhand... Oh, wait, no. This... Does the two-handed fighting allow you to use your uh, your bonus even in the offhand weapon? Yes. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, cool. Then go for it. Oh! Oh dear. Oh shit. <laughs> well, that's that's um, saddening. Yikes. Okay. So you send the javelin flying past the guy, and you even like miscalculate how it returns, and it returns to you, but it kind of like <laughs> startles you a little bit. It's just like it comes back in a strange way out of like what you're usual used to seeing, and uh, it clatters to the ground. So you'd have to use a bonus action to pick it up next round if you were to do such a thing. Fair enough. Um. Oh, damn. I'm trying to think. There's nothing else I could do. Wait, is this dagger that Lilyfoot's got still stuck in him? It's not a real dagger. It's a spiritual weapon. Right, but I mean, is it still stuck in him? Uh, sh- yes. I will say that it's protruding from his back currently. <clears throat> now, Lilyfoot, how does this thing work? I know it's spiritual weapon, so it's like your mana, in fact. Like, but... It's obviously hard enough to go into the dude. Is it still hard enough that, like, if I was to, like, shove him against the railing, it would hurt him, too? I would say yes. Uh, consider, like, the spiritual weapon is more of, like, a... It's like a ghostly apparition sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, I would say if you shoved him, there's a chance. But then again... That'd be a shove would... action, which if you already gotcha. used your action. I will right. allow you to make a persuasion check to convince the two dwarves next to you uh, not to kill him, but to subdue him, if you would like. Okay. Um, 
Give me one second to this see really how my three on one are. situation here. Okay, so it's charisma based. Got it. Typically, that's how persuasion works. Well, I mean, I was trying to figure out. Mm. Very nice. So you kind of like are just like. Guys, we can get information out of them. Tie them up. And, uh... Don't kill like him, please. I have questions. Exactly. They seem on board with the idea. Uh, get it? On board? Because you're on a ship. I got uh, it. Huh? Sorry, I was I'm inhaling various... vape. I, I died. You were very funny. <sighs> Why thank you. So, Mechanicus. Nothing to do. Merfolk, cleaning up the water. Dwarves. Let's see if they feel like braining this guy. Oh yes, they certainly do. Mm. He is asleep. This dwarf basically, basically is kind of... Uh, um, the one dwarf goes to... Basically like as if he's going to swing with his axe and like chop into the guy's side. He dodges, and the dwarf then tackles the guy's legs out from underneath him, and he goes crashing to the deck and slams his head against the wood and is asleep. Uh, this dwarf is going to attempt to... Jesus! Finally. Does this dwarf <laughs> suplex this guy? He does a whopping six damage. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so the dwarf grabs basically this guy's ankle and kind of like pulls him off the railing, and the guy falls, slams his head on the opposite railing, but then stands up on the stairs. He is still hanging on. My goodness. I hope uh, and Dominus is next. <laughs> I hope he is back from his break. Fourteen to miss. There's <laughs> that hit. That's a damage roll waiting to happen. Indominus, describe to us how you uh, brain this guy with exact lethal. How I brain him? All right. So since he's doing his little his little character dance there. I'm going to slip a foot out, knock his feet out from underneath him so he smashes his head on the railing, and then I'm just going to take my Warhammer and eviscerate his head into a pile oh of goo. my god. Very violent and very <laughs> awesome at the same time. At least tell yeah. me the dwarf that's standing next to him is the one he shared stories with about the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> That is a yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, in Davos, you knock this guy. Like, he already fell and hit his head on the railing. You trip him again the other way and send him to hit his head on the other railing. He just rests there, his head spinning, and then he doesn't have a head anymore. It is gone. <laughs> and, you just uh, chum for the ch for the water. Exactly. Meanwhile, the uh, that red-haired curly bearded dwarf kind of looks up at you and is like nicely done friend told you I turned him to mashed potatoes <laughs> and he just like puts up a fist he's like put it there <laughs> <laughs> and with that the mechanicus is once again safe Oh, I'm gonna let you know you put a freaking hurting on Indominus. That crit was pretty, uh, pretty intense from what I understand. Uh, well, considering I have 71 max hit points, and I'm down to 25 plus my 10 temp points. Nah, that's, a, that's a significant chunk. <laughs> yeah, you got me pretty good on that one too. 
but like nowhere near as bad as him. Yeah, that was just because the two fucking, strikes and one yeah, of them. Can't see what that fucker on the top deck for is really a bitch. Uh, yeah. If they so, had, um, if one of them had made it to the deck and like you had like had been a threat to in like hand to hand combat, it would have been pretty uh, pretty messy. Yeah, that was that was uh, glad glad less of them or the few that made it to the deck were the only ones that make it to the deck. Indeed. So can I uh, take my twenty foot of chain and tie this one that's sleeping up? Yes, and in fact, the two dwarves that are next to you assist you in that to guarantee that there is no chance you will be able to escape. Awesome. Um, Does the ship have a brig? <clears throat> well, I, put him I, in the brig. <laughs> I actually have a, a spot that I would like to put him if I can ping it for you. Are you going to put him in your bag of holding? No. Oh, just <laughs> tie him to the mat. <laughs> I, I want him there. It's like a like, in your head. No, no, I want him there because I'm going to heal him while he's chained up. Okay. Because I have questions. And uh, I know there's a shark swimming around that would love to have a snack. Uh, and I also have uh, other things to use for, uh, for interrogation methods. We'll, we'll go with that. I see, I see. Yeah, you can definitely do that. And uh, the dwarves assist you in bringing this guy up to the front of the ship. And uh, they're kind of like standing off to the side. Uh, so yeah, you cast your spell to heal him enough yeah. to bring him to consciousness. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to use a, seven, a second level um, cure wounds, but I'll, I'll use regular cue wounds on him. Okay. So he... His eyes flutter open, and, uh... He, he got five health points back. <laughs> absolute min. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of coughs, and he, like, coughs up some blood, and, uh... He just kind of looks up at you with his foggy eyes, and he's just like... Ugh, fuck. I'm you? gonna join them at the front of the boat too. By the way, mm, Lilyfoot's fucking off. She's no, no, no. She's not staying at the front of the boat. Mm -mm. She's, <laughs> she's gonna get herself away from all the fucking ballistas and fucking get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lilyfoot, your head is still like ringing with the reverberation of the explosions. <laughs> um, so I, I've got a little bit of a spiel for him. Okay. Wait patiently. I'm gonna cast lesser restoration on myself, considering the fact that I did get poisoned. You are cured. Sweet. Magic. Yeah, notice, not about notice the wounds. distinct lack of hospitals in the D&D world. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So here's the first part. You are in a perilous situation, friend. I need to know who you are. Talk quickly as I have some finger to test if you do not cooperate. <laughs> he kind of looks up at you and he's kind of like... Licks his lips a little bit, just like, go on, try me. So I'm going to reach into my bag of holding and pull out the bottle of red bubbling liquid. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. Right. I am yeah. also going to pull out my poisoner's toolkit. Ah, I see. And I'm going to pull out... I'm not going to use the eye goo because I don't think that this version of me met our friend. But I will pull out my syringe of black ooze. 
from the undead. <laughs> oh boy. And I do have a spined lizard tooth that I'm pulling out along with it. And you just the last to intimidate him with all the shit. And the last thing I realize just how many <laughs> torture items he has. Uh, right. I'm, I'm also pulling out a hammer from <laughs> from my toolkits. Like a, my like tinker's a tool. <laughs> like just a, just a working tool, like what you would use to like chisel metal or <laughs> sm smack metal plates while you're using it on an anvil. So just a simple hand hammer. Yes, for those you know, um, for those applications that take a little bit more of a finer approach, more yeah, finer a delicate approach. touch. Yeah, not 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 an indominus touch, but you know, a <laughs> mini touch. It's, it's kind of like surgery. Yes. And the the very last thing that I've got here. That I'm pulling out as my crowbar. <laughs> God, <laughs> you're a walking torture cell. Kind of. This is concerning. Like, <laughs> I, it's just the fact that I know now that he's got all this stuff. Now I'm concerned right. for the future and the other kid. Like, Sir Lurka is <laughs> gonna be treading extra carefully now. Yeah, Sir Lorca that, doesn't know good. what I have. This is true. No, this nobody true. knows what I have other than God in the other campaign, and I'm sharing some information here with <laughs> our, our other selves. Hypothetical now. characters, yes, indeed. So I'm, I'm gonna explain to this guy a couple things that I have here. <laughs> this is how it's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> in character, I'm assuming. Yeah, oh, I am. Guys. Um, unfortunately, with it getting as late as it is, I need to head to bed because I gotta be up five thirty. Ah, fair enough. This is gonna be you the end of it, it. anyhow. You guys will wrap up your business aboard the Mechanicus, cleaning things up and burial. Let's see for those that passed. The captain thanks you for your efforts in securing the safety of the Mechanicus and implores that you add to your report. The request for aid from the Dwarven homeland, the Pathfinder initiative to look into who these individuals might be and what, if anything, greater plans they have beyond just this one attack. 